Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tuesday episode of the A Street Podcast. This is the experience that you need. You may hear other people talking about current events, uh, giving their opinions on things, but let me tell you, there is no other place on the internet with the cutting edge informed opinions, correct opinions, like here on the H3 Podcast Tuesday's edition. So welcome, one and all, to the current events experience. Oh, that's the wrong one. There you go. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by Better Help and... Just to remind you guys, you all better hurry on down to Teddy Fresh because we're having a crazy sale. We have completely what? lost our minds. End of season sale. 50, Insane. 50% off long sleeves, hoodies, jackets, trinkets, beanies, hats. Y'all better head on down to teddyfresh.com slash collection slash sale. Wow. Some of these are even sold out, so there is serious urgency here. Oh, my God. All right, Dan. Wow. <laughs> This is serious. Um, let's just get let's just get right into it. We have the best opinions here at the H3 podcast. You're going to find out just what I'm talking about. Well, actually, for the rest of the month, we have guests booked and booked and booked. So the idea was that we're going to deliver to you guys a Tuesday episode with current events, cutting edge, well thought out, well informed opinions that are correct every time they're expressed. And if you disagree, it may be time to switch the channel <laughs> because mm-hmm. these are correct opinions. Good for the day. Let's start from the top, baby. You know, I was talk- I was joking with Ela. Yeah. <laughs> Just a week ago, I said, you know what is a funny joke? Maybe to tweet Ela with That's... back to school. A Kevlar backpack. I was like, hey, get 50% off your Kevlar backpacks back to school sale. And Ela's like, tasteless. Don't tweet it. Yeah, I thought it was probably too far. I was like, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just a twisted, sick individual. <laughs> Guess what? We saw... Where, what, what, what news station was this on? Here, let me pop this up. Fox News. Okay. It was Fox Business. One of those. Fox, Fox Bi- Business? Are we separating Business. those? Are those different? Same, yeah, that's pretty much the same thing. Well, anyway, on Fox News... Um, this is There's so many layers of greatness to this. This is the goof of the day, by the way, if you guys... Uh, we need to regiment it out. Here you go. So they're selling bulletproof vests, bulletproof backpacks while playing Bulletproof, the song. <laughs> sponsored by Chrysler. <laughs> Who's tasteless now? I was just going to make a little joke. And here they're selling it on the news, sponsored by Chrysler. <laughs> You know, it's like, damn, it's like Chrysler, like the car company. Yeah, (laughs) it's all sponsored by Chrysler school (laughs) shootings sponsored by Chrysler. (laughs) Here. New meaning this morning. MC Armor is the company behind high end bulletproof Mm. backpacks and clothing that are revamped. Oh, cool. Just shoot a point blank. (laughs) That'll 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 teach the kids how to. uh, Make sure their backpacks work. And remember, kids, if you want to ensure that your backpack is indeed bulletproof, bring a gun to school and shoot your friend point blank. Is this a serious the equipment product? Market. It is anticipated to reach more than $5 well, billion dollars in the next attack. seven Man. years. That would be the About revenue. as serious as a school shooting. <laughs> How? Wait, $6 billion? Oh, they're really projecting a lot. By 2025, you cannot project out. What? <laughs> seven years. In seven years, I'm projected to be the president. <laughs> And see if that happens. So I thought this was just a goof. I thought this was a total blast. So next time you guys go to the Chrysler dealership, remember, <laughs> think school shootings. Pick up a backpack. <laughs> Pick up a... <laughs> With your new Chrysler, get a Kevlar backpack. How Arc. much is that going to do? That's just like... Well, imagine there's like an active shooter. <laughs> You're like, pull your backpack around to the front. <laughs> Trying to like dodge the <laughs> bullet and shit. <laughs> Brought to you by Chrysler. So who's tasteless now, Eva? What do you are. think about my ideas now? Don't do it. Kind of a forward thinker, aren't I? See, I did it as a joke, but these guys are serious as a as a. I want to say school. Sh- the traditional saying is as serious as a heart attack. I, I want to revise it <laughs> to as serious as a school shooting. 
for as much extra tastelessness as possible. Now, Ela, you've heard the saying, they're taking our jobs. Robots are taking our jobs. I've expressed concern on this very podcast mm -hmm. that automation are taking our jobs. Now, this video is going to haunt you. It is going to really concern you and hopefully everyone watching at home. This is not to be taken lightly. Okay? What we have here is a golfing robot. If they can <laughs> golf better than us, then we are really fucked. Look at this golfer. Yesterday, a robot Boom. taking a swipe at this Guess David. What? And what else would this you expect? Robot? The the Phoenix Open? <laughs> really, you, called L you know it's true. How's you know this? it's real. <laughs> Hold on, pause it. Look at these guys jumping and cheering for their for heralding the end. <laughs> In ten years, there's not going to be golfers anymore. There's going to be a bunch of robots on the field hitting balls. Have done that at 16. Why would <laughs> golf still exist if, uh, if robots are killing it? Yeah. Football, basketball, it's just going to be robots. That is actually pretty cool, though. You want to see that again, Ella? Yeah. Really? Cool. I'm down. Robot. Boom. Taking a swipe at that robot kind of looks like the guy that would play golf. <laughs> That's an insane <laughs> shot, robot, dude. His name is Eldrick. <laughs> Hole in one. So. <sighs> Value your jobs. They're coming for him. All of them. Uh, Post Malone, our dear friend. I don't know if you guys followed this. It just happened this morning. Um, well, last night he won Song of the Year. Yeah. VMAs. Very proud of him. Very happy for him. Yeah. He won it for Rockstar. And just, I just, I want to congratulate him. I want to say I love him. He's a sweet, dear, great guy. He deserves it. And it's insane to see what he's accomplished since we met him. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just this year, we probably met him like two years ago now, but like this year alone, since his new album came out, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Damn. And it's easier to forget what is he? He's 23 years old. Okay. <laughs> that should make everybody That's at home crazy. depressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that depresses the hell out of me. When I was 23 years old, hmm, I was probably playing World of Warcraft in a, in a disgusting <laughs> dormitory room with like leftover burritos. I mean, I was going nowhere fast <laughs> pretty incredible yeah what a 23 year old can accomplish so love and pride for him let's watch his acceptance speech here you go baby what? post Malone baby oh, we can cut to the chase on this one a little bit there you go. Everybody give it up for 21 <laughs> Savage real quick. Give it up for Post Malone. I just want to, you know, you go to bed and you dream about maybe winning. And then whenever you get up here, you don't remember what the hell to say. Because you wrote it on. But, you know, thank you so much. Why is and the I microphone so low? Uh, <laughs> thank you to my good family. Boy. Thank you to my crew. <laughs> Everybody that was Dude, he's not, he, he's not that tall. He's a tall guy, but he's not that tall. Why are y'all making him act like he's 5'2", for Christ's sake? I mean, the guy, it's his big moment. Why are you making him hunch over like that? That's a good point, Elo. Damn. The song, um, thank you everybody for listening. Um, it's, it's funny, we know a lot of those yeah. guys. Honestly, in a hundred million years, I would never, you know, expect to, um, do this ever so this is sick and uh thank you so much <laughs> he seems, guys. Thank he you so seems much. Yeah. yeah god bless <laughs> oh 21 Post Malone, they closed the mic on, on his ass thank you to zone six east atlanta man. lower the mic more can we lower the mic they've got like a button <laughs> like uh can we lower the mic on savage by the way i have we were at his birthday party and i was like man i want to get him a sick birthday gift because he's like such a good friend he bought you a really beautiful gift on your birthday. Mm -hmm. He got Ela like this limited edition Supreme Fender Strat guitar. There's only like 30 of them in the world. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything that is so valuable other than that. I don't know what to do. With I don't it. know what to do you with hang it. Hang it on the wall. But he just shows up. <laughs> he shows up like a couple hours after he shows up. Some dude shows up with a guitar. Yeah. 
and it was like this incredible Fender Strat Supreme limited edition. And I was like, oh, wow, really cool guitar. Like, I didn't even understand <laughs> that he was giving it to you. I thought yeah. the guy just <laughs> delivered it to Pulse. And then he left. And I was like, oh, he forgot his guitar. <laughs> and he was like, it's for me. Somehow I didn't get that. But anyway, I was like, damn, how the fuck do we top that? So, Well, you can't. So, I, well, but... right, you, I can't really. But I was like, how, I got to get him a really nice gift. So I got, I went down, he's a gun fanatic. We've been to this gun store together. And I got him this cool little snipey. Um, what'd you just link me, Dan? What I think is the guitar that you're talking about? Mm. Oh, let's show it. We got pictures on deck. Yep. Is this, dude, we are so interactive. We are so, this is such an experience that we can just talk <laughs> about something and show it to you at the same time. <laughs> uh, Cutting edge technology. Here. This is such an experience. If only I could do it within, <laughs> actually, here. Yeah. Pretty incredible stuff here, folks. Pretty. Pretty incredible stuff here, folks. Okay? <laughs> I, so, I'm still, I don't know how do you display it. Do you, do you frame it? Because it also comes in a nice box. Do you I, keep it in the box or do no. you take it out of the box? You take it out of the box. I think you, you I mean, there's mounts for guitars. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of just like a wall piece. I don't think you, I think you just hang it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm going to his birthday. Ela was gone, so I was kind of on my own, by the way, mm -hmm. taking care of myself, which is hard enough as it is. And so I go to this gun shop, and I'm like, what can I do? What can I get post? So he had ordered this, this really cool Glock from them, and I was like, I want to get him something dope. So I got him this little snipey, cool-ass laser snipey that you put on top of the Glock, right? Is that the official name, or are you just calling it a snipey? It's called a snipey. Oh, it's no. called a snipey. No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a scope. It's a sick-ass scope, by the way, because you only see it if you look through the snipey hole. So if you got someone locked on, they don't see the laser right here, oh. like in the movies. Only you see it snipied mm -hmm. in. Right? And I got them, like, a thousand rounds. I thought I was feeling pretty good. I had, like, two ammo boxes, a snipey, a, b a bunch of rounds, and I was like, you know what? It's a thoughtful gift, it's personal. It's pretty weird to show up into a party with, I know. Like, it was a big party, and I felt a little bit strange showing up with ammo. <laughs> At that gun store, I was like, are you sure this is okay? <laughs> it's funny. I actually went in there to buy him a weapon. I was like, oh, I'm going to buy him a gun. They're like, dude, you can't. They're like, what, what are you, fucking stupid? You can't buy him a gun and bring it to a party? I was like, oh, I guess that does make sense. I guess that's probably a good thing. I yeah. guess that's like the one thing you can't yeah. do in America. I was like, that's probably, yeah, that's probably a good thing. It's funny, on one hand, I'm like here on the show being like, gun control. Yeah. And then on the other hand, I'm like, can I buy a weapon and then on the same day give it to somebody else? They're like, no, dude. It's like, okay, I guess that makes sense. So anyway, I bought him a bunch of ammo, 1,000 rounds of snipey. I probably spent like $1,500. Pretty good for us. Yeah, I was like, damn, I hooked my, the dude up. And then I, 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 he comes and I was like, hey, man, check out what I got you. And he was very gracious. This isn't about post at all. This is more a rant against 21 Savage, because I have beef with that guy, and he doesn't know it. So, I mean, Pulse was very gracious, very sweet. As you know, he's a perfect angel, probably the closest thing to a perfect human being. And then Savage shows up, and he gives him, I shit you not, like five minutes later, a $100,000 watch. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Mr. fucking hip-hop, you gotta show my broke ass up. You know? What kind of watch was it? Do you remember? I don't know. it, But it was like on the news. I and saw now, it on Twitter news. Where's my snipey in the news? <laughs> that was newsworthy. <laughs> and now I see Austin walking around with his <laughs> sick-ass $100,000 watch. I don't see him walking around with his snipey. Look, it's not about how much the gift cost. It's about the the gesture. In this case, it was most definitely about... <laughs> Well, he loved the watch. It was a great watch. It was a great <laughs> gift. I just honestly wish maybe you could have waited and given it to him <laughs> before the party, you know, like maybe a different time, Savage. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of rude to me personally, and I do take it as a kind of a problem. <laughs> so if you see Savage, let him know that we do have beef. Don't let him know. <laughs> Everyone's going to be done. <laughs> no, but anyway, congratulations to Post Malone. 
And then this morning, that happened last night, and this morning, yeah. uh, I, I see my brother-in-law, who's like somehow like, we gotta hire my brother-in-law <laughs> to do research. This guy is like in tune with the world. <laughs> he uh, he t- sends me a TMZ article. It's like Post Malone's airplane is stuck in the air. The wheels blew out when they take off. Yeah. By the way, what? How do the wheels just blow up when you're taking off? How's that a thing? I don't know. So he's circling around, doing an, about to do emergency landing. They're in the air doing circles, trying to f- burn up fuel to reduce the weight so they can, you know, land more safely. That's got to be so itself. scary. Yeah. And so, anyway, he landed. He is safe. We're all very happy about that. We were watching live here in the office. Um, he made this tweet. I landed, guys. Thank you for your prayers. Cannot believe how many people wish death on me. Fuck That's you. Like, but not today. I can't believe that. When I read that, I was like, whoa, I didn't see any. I mean, I wasn't looking. Well, yeah, but I wasn't I believe looking, it. but... God, people are so insane. Be like, imagine he's on the airplane, like, super scared, and he's reading shit like, I hope he crashes and dies. I'm like, whoa! Y'all are fucking need Jesus. So mean. I would never say that to anyone, but if you said that to him, you need Jesus. Can you diagnose that, Ela? Why are people saying that to him? Do they need Jesus, or what are they missing? Um, no, they just need a life. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so anyway, love, congratulations, appreciations to Post Malone. He's safe, and he's alive, and he's looking good. <laughs> he is looking good. He's got all these suits lately. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. He looked thin in that really VMA cool. video, too. Yeah, I think he lost a lot of weight. I think he's losing weight. He's slamming. He's jamming. He's a rock star. Love <laughs> his ass. Now, moving on to something more interesting than that, <laughs> somebody emailed me over, uh, over the past couple of days, an email that kind of stood out to me and sort of shocked <laughs> me. Um, he said to me, hey, I've been listening a lot to your conversation about wiping and anal, you know, cleanliness and hygiene. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know what I do is I nair my asshole. I was like, whoa, nair is a topical cream that you apply to hair and then you and then basically it burns it off and you just wipe it clean. So this guy was like, I use sensitive nair on my asshole ring and I wipe the hair out. I was like, whoa, that is so insane and hilarious. I think I have to try it. And I think you shouldn't because you, this stuff is like you could burn your skin. I actually I didn't know what it was. So I went on Amazon just to check the reviews. <laughs> And, the, like, most of the reviews are pictures of people who got burned. Do you see any assholes? No. <laughs> the asshole is more resilient or less resilient? Less. Than normal? Really? Because it touches shit. I think they had that extra layer of protection. <laughs> no. no. Huh. <laughs> well, I think that's part of the charm is that. The I mean, charm. Ela, first of all, this is the Very pursuit. Very charming. <laughs> I'm in the pursuit of knowledge. This is, like... Forbidden fruit, forbidden knowledge, mm. and biblical and the biblical. You're uh, on a mission. It's more important. It's not just a mission. This is God's work. You're if God's you read messenger. The, if you read the Bible, the story of Adam and Eve, the apple is the forbidden knowledge. People don't always talk about how they wipe their ass and clean their ass, and these are important things that we need to collectively share our knowledge. Mm-hmm. So I think of myself as kind of a trailblazer, of a kind of a. Uh, Magellan, mm-hmm. a what Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I don't know. I think he was someone who explored. Okay. <laughs> I'm an explorer. I'm kind of a Darwin, <laughs> if you will. I'm a great thinker. They said Isaac Newton. He, Isaac Newton said of himself, "I'm not a giant. I just stand on the shoulders of those before me." Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm. And doing. how is that related? Because to you? I'm not an ass wiping <laughs> giant. I pl- I stand on the shoulders of the wealth of knowledge of those who have come before me. Nobody uh-huh. has dared in the history of mankind, as far as I can tell, to collect this knowledge and to share it with the world. This is important stuff, Hila. Mm-hmm. So I think the pursuit of the forbidden fruit and the biblical tale of Adam and Eve, <laughs> nair, <laughs> is much the same. And so I will nair my asshole. In Hebrew, nair is like... Uh... 
something you you put inside your asshole. <laughs> really? When you How like coincidental. What like, is it? Uh, let's say you need to take a pill, but through your asshole, oh, you a, know, uh, like it's, it's like a, medicine. What would you call it? Suppository. Yeah. Mm. So that's what that's called nair. Oh, that's a, such. So a, the first time you said it to me, I was like, "What do you mean?" Mm. You got. <laughs> that's almost a sign from God. I mean, Hebrew is God's <laughs> language, right? <laughs> So nair, in a way, was almost the destiny, the destinal use of nair was <laughs> of the ass. <laughs> so you're kind of supporting my my. I'm not my at journey. all. Well, I think That's before not Tuesday, the I journey. think this week I'm gonna nair my asshole. <laughs> For better or worse, if it burns, <laughs> if it cures, I, I, I mean, I have never had a wipe in recent memory that wasn't hairy. And I think that this could be a game changer. Um, has the Metamucil been helping you? Love it. Mm. It's not a cure-all. Like, a lot of people are asking for updates on the Metamucil, which I, is this fiber I've supplement. Been, I've been taking it, too, because it's also just fiber, mm-hmm. which should be good. But, like, when... I, I didn't notice any difference in my... Really? Yeah. See, the first time I took it, I swear to God, it was like Teflon colon. I just <laughs> slid right out. Yeah. Um... But for me, it's not the end-all situation like Chris had. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I have a hybrid situation. I, I'm i using less baby wipes, but I'm still ending wet. <laughs> it's possible he takes more because there's these huge pills, and they say you have to take, like, yeah, four of them. Yeah, I'm taking two. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Well, I'm curious. What do you guys, you know, I, I want not just the, the great thinkers who join us here today— I'm looking for the great thinkers out there, the great minds out there that have interesting wiping techniques. The intellectual so, dark web. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it. guys, give us a ring today. 808 Hot Meme. Uh, we're looking for great, great thinkers. Okay? So, give us a call at 808 Hot Meme and share your techniques. I'm very curious to hear what you're doing. Okay? Um, with that being said, we've got so many great videos coming up. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up next, Dude Drinks His Own Cum in a video that's fully monetized. The channel name is Gay God. Beautiful. And he is living up to that name. He drinks his own cum. Maybe, I don't know if I give you a reason to close it, <laughs> but it's very funny, very entertaining, so I don't think you're going to miss this. Um, with that being said, my dudes, let's kick it to a break. We'll be right back. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode of the History Podcast. I need some better help. I am anxious right now. <laughs> God, seriously. Better, but this is one of these genius services. It's online counseling. Mm, they've got fully licensed counselors ready to consult with at any time. You get access to licensed, trained, fully accredited counselors and therapists. LGBTQ plus friendly. Basically, whoever you are, what religion you are, couples, anything, boom, they've got you covered with fully trained therapists to talk to. All you have to do is go to betterhelp.com slash H3, fill out a brief questionnaire about what's going on with you, and they match you up with a counselor who is a perfect match for you, and you can start counseling pretty much right away after they hook you up with a counselor. It's affordable. Therapy is expensive, which is kind of such BS because everybody needs help. Yeah. In fact, you might even say poor people are the ones that have more shit to deal with Mm -hmm. because everybody needs money. But guess what? It's way cheaper than in-person counseling. There's a therapist costs like $300 an hour. Like, okay, I'll sure I'll spend half my paycheck to talk to you. But here's the thing. Pricing is between $35 to $65 a week for unlimited counseling, meaning you are connected with a counselor the entire time via your phone or a computer. You can schedule video, phone, or text sessions when necessary, usually once per week. They also have financial aid available that you can apply for if you need help. You can't afford it. Great. Wonderful. Beautiful. What a great service. With better help, you're not wasting time traveling, going to and fro. Yeah, a lot of people have trouble face-to-face with people. It's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's tough. It's hard. But this is a beautiful thing about this, this service. You're online. 
You can have a video, you can have a chat, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever level with, they're there to help you out. A lot of people are not comfortable talking to therapists. So the best way to do it, to get in the door, is with better help. When I was at my worst with anxiety, it was so it was impossible for me to go into an office and get the the help that I needed. That's the beautiful thing about better help. So guys, if you want need to talk to somebody for any reason at all, this is the way to try it out. Go to betterhelp.com slash h3. Give it a shot. You deserve it. Help yourself out with better help. Thank you for sponsoring us. Welcome back to the, basically, if you're looking for opinions, look no further. This you have is the arrived. podcast. And this is the, the H3 opinion podcast experience. Whatever that means. I honestly, I'm a little flustered because I just, not used to just three minute breaks. Just ran <laughs> back from the bathroom and literally, Dan was like, hurry up. <laughs> they like jumped into the seat at got, literally four I've seconds. I've got my so paper towel on the got key it. here. So. Yeah, me too. All right. Same. <laughs> okay. So as promised, guys, we've got a thrill ride here lined up. This video shocked me. Oh, okay, it's got been age gated. That's good. It wasn't before. This video shocked me, frankly, like no video I've seen in a long time. And the story, the scoop originally was that um, it was fully monetized for a long time. Which I get. I guess you can only blame YouTube for so much. It's called Do Vegans Actually Taste Better? So it's like... How, how does YouTube know that a dude is guzzling yeah. his own jizz on camera? <laughs> the part that really gets me about this video, you by the way, gay god, I mean. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Imagine being called, like, Jew god or something. <laughs> I kind of like that title. The Jew god. So the thing that really, pit, like, gets me is that he's he jizzes in, like, a little kind of medicine cup. And then he tastes it. And then he's like, he loves it. But then he drinks it three more times and he finishes the cup. And I'm actually getting nauseous as I Me repeat too. that deal. Mm. So this video is clearly for science. Bro, you definitely, if you're going to drink your own jizz on camera like that, you're definitely the gay god. Not many people can step to you on that. Level. The bottom of this. Do vegans actually taste better? And I have actually been vegan for 12 years, like over 12 years. So uh, who better to <coughs> test this theory than me right. on myself? And I haven't really tasted myself in quite a while. Bro, what the fuck is wrong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this not Tasted some weird myself, fetish? myself like, like you're supposed to know what he's talking about? He drank his own jizz. No, but he didn't say that yet. He's just saying, I haven't tasted myself in a while. Like, yeah. you're supposed to know what that means? I think means? people watching regularly Gay God know what that means. Huh. I'm subscribed to Gay God channel. Is I know that a that serious <laughs> on his channel? But, like, how frequently are you drinking your own con? Yeah. Huh. But how is this not, like, a weird fetish? Like, drinking your con in front of people publicly is kind of... It probably is. Yeah. So I might have went ahead and shot a little bit of myself into this shot glass and I kind of want to be open and honest with you guys and mm -hmm. tell you what I actually taste like. Suggested. I'm my first time experiencing 10 inches. That's what it says in the top right. <laughs> this, is, this is certainly the gay god, my dudes. <laughs> hmm. But like why? I just don't understand. Like you're, you can be gay. Like. Obviously, no one cares that you're gay in this day and age. But, like, when your whole identity, everything you do and talk about and every is, like, about, like, that you're gay, it's like, there's got to be more to you than that. Everything's about, like, I drank my own chiz. I took a 10-inch cock. It's like, there's got to be more to you than that. It's just a YouTube game that everyone's trying to play now. And, like, everything's got to be so crazy. Huh. Like, we used to... Oh, we did this video of tasting different sodas and uh -huh. in weird flavors. I forgot to tell you that one no, of them is. <laughs> this is. <laughs> now it's like gone this it's, far. It's soda tasting gross sodas is not enough anymore. No. <laughs> what he should have done is be like, "This is a black guy's jizz, a white guy's jizz, a vegan's jizz." Now well, that well, it's not done. You know. I watched it all. No, with videos. <laughs> Five times. <laughs> Look at his face right now. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Well, anyway, well, I'll have to bookmark my first time I took 10 inches for um, <laughs> for later. Edit to watch for another this. day. No, this is TMI and all, but you know what? You only live once. So bottom up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay. He's not so. just kidding though. He drinks it all like throughout the video. <laughs> when I saw that I was like, oh, thank God <laughs> It's not it's actually just clickbait, but I promise he drinks it all and I don't know if I even need to necessarily <laughs> Yeah, I'll know I'll keep watching and I'll know when I've had enough You all tell right. me when you're done watching this Okay, cuz I don't you know I'll shut up. Oh, obviously, like, I've let the gay been talk. with a whole bunch of different guys. Not a whole bunch. Whoa, making myself sound a little slutty. But I feel Bro, like... Bro, you're holding a cup of your own jizz and you're about to drink it. You don't need help sounding slutty. Meat eaters, they're so salty, which is weird because I, um... I eat a lot of salt, but all my exes are like, yeah, you're really sweet tasting. And I'm like, how is this that even is so possible? Weird. Like, I eat like 10 times as much salt as you. But I guess it has to do with like red meat consumption and all that stuff. So they are always. I think I've had enough. Absolutely... You've had enough? <laughs> you want to see him drink? Or should we Not avoid? really. Oh, yeah, he did it. He did it here. Here, let's see. Let's hit a drink here. Potent smelling. Like, it kind of. Oh, he drank some already. It looks like less in volume. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, let's see what I smell like. Taking a Why deep sniff of his own jizz. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'm getting nauseous. Okay, see, like, yeah, okay. So Have we seen enough? Yeah. You was hitting the button like on this? You don't want to see him hit it? No, not really. Okay. You don't want to see him throw it back? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see him hit that. You don't want to see him throw it back. Yeah, like, like warm sunny D. Like if I were to be warm drinking... sunny D. All right, I'm gonna bounce out of this one. Yeah. If you guys want to continue this saga on your own, head on over to Gay God. He's the god of the gays. <laughs> gay. Oh god, Gay God. I want to be Jew God. <laughs> Jew God, the great thinker of the dark web. What was that group of people you're saying, Yila? The intellectual dark web? Yes. I'm the I'm the Jew God of the intellectual dark web. <laughs> what is this intellectual dark web? It's like a collection of the, all these... It's uh, Jordan Peterson, apparently. And others. And others. So am I going to be inducted in that for my research into wiping? We'll see what results... You bring back with your research. Mm. How do we have any interesting calls yet, Ian? Uh, he's in the middle of screening right now. Dan, I don't think I'm logged into the call. Oh my god! Dang. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, he's still looking for one. Okay. Next up, break invasion is back. He's dodging. Oh. Me, not gonna lie, I've been trying to get a hold of him, and he's been dodging me a little bit. That's okay. Once I tell him I'm the Jew God, he'll have to uh, respect <laughs> me a little bit more. We are the Raiders. Chris here. Today is Kissing Frank. I'm starting to like Chris. Edition. If this video gets 100,000 thumbs up, 6 ix manager said 6 ix 9 will come on. My favorite thing about Chris's videos is how all the audio is like so peaked. <laughs> I was about so to say, what the hell destroyed. is going on? I panicked. I thought it was on <laughs> no. my end, but no. That's, that's his style. Like that. <laughs> his style is like torn and destroyed audio as much as possible. It's a stylistic decision. I'm telling you, watch his past 20 videos. They're all like peaked out of this planet. Kissing Frank 6 9 edition. <laughs> if this video gets 100,000 thumbs up, 6 ix 9 Why is there a group of. Uh, <laughs> What's going on behind you, Chris? What is he trying to look like here? What is this? Oh, so there's this rapper 6 ix 9 Trying I'll show to you look that. like him? Yeah, I'll show you. 6 ix 9 This guy. You've seen him. He's a, uh, he's, he's like a meme yeah. rapper. Yeah. That 6 ix 9 will come on the show. A little bit of a foosie tube, guaranteed to come on. Yeah. And see who can get the most kisses. This is a new trend. I've always... Let's do it. All right, so here's the game. If Guys, I have I... gotten the word that if you can somehow smash 100,000 likes on this video, if we can get 100,000 live viewers right now, Prank Invasion will come on the show as a guest. <laughs> and kiss me. 
What if I kissed Chris? Would that be shocking? Would that be good TV? Yeah. If we do a quick aim for a quick that kiss? That would be a good video. Huh. <laughs> Because <laughs> if he comes in here, we kind of do need to play a quick game for a quick kiss. Huh. Me and him. Yeah. No, not me. Not you. No, I wouldn't. Th- I wouldn't volunteer you for that. But would you? You're kind of damaged. It would goods, be funny, honestly. Once you kiss Chris. <laughs> I wonder if we could also get a girl in here, like an actress. No. No. Okay. I'll do it. Mm-mm. I'll fucking do it. I swear to God, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do a quick game for a quick kiss. <laughs> Gross. I swear to God. With the noises. <laughs> I'll do it, dude. You think I'm not? I'll do it with this fully neared asshole, too. And he would grab your ass. Fully neared. Mm. <laughs> oh Show took a sexy turn. <laughs> we'll see how he pulls this girl in 6 9 style. Hey. Can sound like 6 9 You gotta give me a really, really quick kiss. Okay. You're down? I'm down. Okay, here I go. <clears throat> Squawk gang! <laughs> She's like, yep, nailed it. She, she irresistible. <laughs> what is he even trying? And to you do? know where it goes from here. I gotta say, I love Chris. <laughs> it's getting to the point where it's just so good. He's making parodies of himself at this point. Yeah, no, it's turn. It's really turning into something special. Um, we've got current events. We've got everything to talk about. Everything going on in the world. I'm gonna tell you guys about it now. Enter the current events experience. Mm -hmm. Drug overdoses up 10% in the U.S. What is going on? Well, it's mostly from prescription drugs, actually. It shouldn't really surprise anyone, but I have been following the story. I mean, here you can see by year a chart. Basically, since 2016 and, and to this day, it's shot up. These are all synthetic opioids, basically pain, uh, prescribed, pain killers. Prescri- yeah, pres- prescription painkillers. W- way worse than heroin. <laughs> yeah, like almost double the death. And if you go, it's interesting, if you go back to like 2012, 2013, it was the least deadly. Mm-hmm. Although what's yeah. kind of going on in the U.S., if you go back to 1999, people weren't really dying from drugs. But somehow, in like, in the, in the, in the end of this century, everybody's, what's going on? People are profiting from it. and Heroin, cocaine, but it's like all going up. Is this a cultural issue or is this? Well, you could, you could say the, the whole graph going up maybe is a cultural issue, but yeah. that, that one spike on the synthetic opioids right. is not. I am, I am very curious about the cultural issue of why in the past... 20, 15, or 15 to 20 years are, is everybody dying from like what the fuck yeah. I wonder if there's some explanation or is it just life has become so unbearable you know it's like yeah I don't know <laughs> let's take away health care let's put everyone in debt and let's just give them some opiates to fucking kill themselves on it's become a lot hard. I'll tell you what, life's become a lot harder. If you go back to 1999, people could buy houses, people mm-hmm. could afford rent. And over these past two decades, it's gotten a lot harder to live. A lot more expensive, a lot harder to get medical treatment. I don't know if that's a relation, yeah. but I, that's pretty sad. There's a bigger conversation here besides the fact that everyone's dying on opioids. But that is the, the story here. Now, I've been watching, I just find it so ironic, like, let me open this again, that there's this war on drugs, like marijuana. First of all, I'm not a marijuana user, and I think that its benefits and is greatly exaggerated. I don't think marijuana is an innocent drug. But I do find it absolutely the greatest, probably the single greatest problem with our society is the fact that 1% of Americans are in prison, most of them for harmless drug offense. So it's Mm -hmm. like we're locking up marijuana users. And meanwhile, doctors and pharmaceutical companies are openly poisoning people. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking about 30,000 deaths. That's a small subset of people who are addicted 
whose lives are being ruined because they're taking so many of these opiates. And doctors are just giving them out like fucking candy because they're getting kickbacks. There's like three big uh, companies who distribute all this and they know exactly what they're doing. And Oh, yeah. That's just what it is. We saw the 60 Minutes um, report about this. Yeah. How there's like little... Uh, pain clinics opening up You guys everywhere. have probably seen them. I've seen them all over the place. I'm like, what is that? Pain clinic. And all, apparently you can just walk in and a doctor will prescribe you a painkiller. And and yeah. it's like, it's all super addictive. They'll give you anything. They'll give you Oxycontin. They'll yeah. give you any opiate, any crazy shit you want. Just be like, hey, my, hey, doc, my back hurts. And these crooked-ass doctors are just writing prescriptions all day long. Mm-hmm. My dad, he um, he had like some arthritic pain in his wrist and this doctor gave him like an unlimited supply of like really intense painkillers. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Like if you actually took it? So easy. And, and I mean, insane. this is an ongoing issue. It's mm-hmm. not like, uh, it's not like doesn't debilitate his life or anything. Yeah. He doesn't, it's nothing in my opinion that a little Tylenol or ibuprofen couldn't resolve. But like, that's insane. That's so crazy. What's going on there? And anyway, in the 60 Minutes report that I highly recommend, they were showing how these huge pharmaceutical companies are basically lo- con- are always lobbying Congress to not enforce or regulate or control mm-hmm. at all this this growing issue. They showed, like, for example, like there was one town, like this is really ravaging like poor white communities. It seems like in like rural America like Arkansas and Alabama and Mississippi. There was like a small town in Mississippi or somewhere that had imported so many and sold so many painkillers that it was something like 50 pills for every resident of the city. (laughs) Which means that they were probably just selling it to drug dealers. But like there's glaring problems here of everyone dropping like this this is this is so sick and and the government's not doing anything about it because there's so much lobbying money and meanwhile we're locking up marijuana users yeah so that's pretty nuts um that really grinds my gears you know I just hate this whole, like, moral... There's always this moral argument from, like... I mean, I mean, Jeff Sessions, the attorney general, thinks that marijuana should be, like, a federal crime. Like, he is staunchly against legalizing mm-hmm. marijuana. It's like, okay, dude, what are you doing about this shit? Yeah. Like, glad that you've got your moral imperative about marijuana and, and relatively harmless drugs. What are you doing about this shit? So twisted, man. Fucking, can you believe that? It's like Tijuana out there. I've driven past these places when I'm driving around town. You see, like, a uh, pain clinic. I was like, what does that mean, a pain clinic? What do you What do you do there? I never imagined that it was actually just people giving prescription drugs out. Yeah, like, nothing. I had no idea. So, I, I'm just reading what you were talking about. And, uh, yeah, and like, all of a sudden, there is a small town... And the pharmacy will be buying 50 times the amount right. that a normal pharmacy right. is buying. Yeah. And it's like they're just turning a blind eye and of just letting it happen. Because the pharmaceutical drug companies are lobbying the shit out of them. Yeah. And blocking it. It's like, dude, God, Congress is so twisted. These guys are so fucking corrupt. It's like scary. Not to mention the, that the water is turning frogs gay. <laughs> That's a whole other issue. Um... Did you want to talk about this airplane story, Ila? Or did we find it too, a little too sad? When you already <laughs> brought it up. Yeah, but come on. Is this the video you put together? Where's the one you put together, Dan? The, uh, the edit, it's, uh, it's shared with you. Shared with me where? Here, I'll, I'll drop it in, uh, in our chat right now. Um... This story is a weird and wild one, man. And it's kind of sad. It's very sad. Um, this guy 
I'm not sure how he even got in the cockpit. He works at an airplane. Well, like, how is it so easy to it's just... Not. There's no key? You think he masterminded this? It's not easy, right. but he figured it out. So this guy works at an airplane in Seattle, and he just stole the airplane and went for a joyride. But his intention was, was to commit suicide. And what's so intriguing about it is basically this conversation was recorded between him and air control of air control being like hey man you know bring it bring it down and he's just he's just he's so casual about it he just seems like he's having a good time um dan i don't see it Just drop the link in Discord. For it you. didn't work. I clicked it. I think I need. I'm mm. not logged in. Here, but here, I, I've got it in your email. So here, it. let's pop this up. Twenty-one year old. Right for departure. Just hold. Uh, hold on with me for a second. So what's so sorry, interesting about this too sorry. is like uh, my mic came, came off. I threw up a little bit. Uh, you know, I, uh, hold on. Ah, shoot. Man, I'm sorry about this. I hope this doesn't ruin your day. Just flying the plane around, do you seem comfortable with that? Oh, hell yeah, it's a blast, man. I've played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. <laughs> it's like kidding around. Yeah. What's so crazy is this, what you guys are seeing is all footage people shot from the ground. Mm hmm. Because this guy was like, I'm going to try doing barrel rolls and all these tricks because his intention was to die. So he was almost just like, but he was he was performing some pretty amazing But he amazing was also feats. being like, he didn't want to hurt people on the yeah. street. So he was also careful of that. Yeah. Really interesting. No, he definitely was story. not wanting to hurt yeah. anyone. Okay, and, uh, and you can see all the terrain around you. Uh, you've got no issue with visibility or anything. Nah, everything's peachy, peachy clean. Just did a little circle around Rainier. It's beautiful. Um, I think I got some gas to go check out uh, the Olympics. And, uh, yeah. Okay, and uh, Rich, do you know, uh, are you able to tell what altitude you're at? To the jets? No, I'm not taking you to any jets. I'm actually keeping you away from aircraft that are trying to land at SeaTac. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I don't want to screw with that. I'm glad, uh, glad you're not... Uh, you know, screwing up everyone else's day. Uh, hopefully, yeah, not Where's, uh, turn footage please. of him doing, like, loops yeah, and shit here? Left hand turn, please. Look at this oh, shit. Yeah. Life, huh? He's I, in, like, a charter plane doing loops. I gotta stop looking at the fuel, because it's going down quick. This is probably, uh, like, jail time for life, huh? I, I mean, I would hope it is for a guy like me. Well, Rich, we're not, we're not gonna worry or think about that, but could you start a left hand turn, that. please? Crazy. 718, I believe so. Uh, still working on an issue. Um, I don't really I didn't know air on how long airlines could do that. Damn it, Andrew! People's lives are at stake here! Now, Rich, don't, don't say stuff like that. No, nah, I just told you, I'm not, I don't want to hear that one. I just want you to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Be better than uh, trying to land it. Like I know how to put the landing. By gear the way, down. the plane is hey, empty. Think... He's the only one yeah. on the plane, for the record. If I land this successfully, uh, last will give me a job as a pilot. <laughs> uh, you know, I think they would give you a job doing anything if you could pull this off. <laughs> yeah, right. If you wanted to land, it just sounds like the just a normal guy. Runway right. just ahead and to your left. Again, yeah. that's uh, McCord Field. There's one um, part here where... If you wanted to try, that might be the best way to set up and see if you can land there. Dang, uh, did you talk to McCord yet? Because I don't think I'd be happy with you telling me I could land like that because I could mess some stuff up. To hear that I did this. Um, to, to hear that I did this. Um, I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. Um, he's apologizing to just a broken probably his guy. family members and friends. Got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. All right. Um, hey, pilot guy, can this thing do a uh, a backflip? You think? Um, like. Uh, Damn. I don't know what's going on, dude. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's sad. It's a hell of a way to go. 
But guys, seriously. Shit, get help if you're fucking feeling bad, man. Definitely don't steal a plane. But, a little follow-up to that somewhat depressing story. This is a charming, charming stuff here. No, I'm just like, so these two guys are right, proposing at the same exact time Wait, at Disney. Okay, okay. Look at this shit. Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, you gotta love that. They both, they double propose. Come on, give me a fucking break, would you? Would you please give me a fucking break? We got a double proposal here at Disneyland for Christ's sake, all right? People are, they're crying, they're freaking out. That's at the Magic Castle. Come on, guys, give me a fucking break here. We got a double proposal. Am I right? This warmed my heart. I'm, a, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I said, you know what? He pulled a ring out. <laughs> he had a ring. She was very cute about it too. She was like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> you know? Both of them were very much like, mm. <laughs> Love it. So there you go, guys. We get a balance. We bring balance here on the H3 podcast, okay? <laughs> this is too much of a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Peaks and valleys. This I've told you this is the premier experience on the internet today. <laughs> maximum highs, maximum lows. <laughs> Better help. <laughs> this one. Okay, we went from sadness <laughs> to joy and now to rage. <laughs> I feel like this next story is really is really made me rageful. We re- we're covering the whole spectrum of emotions here. We have some callers before we take this, Dan. We let's get some serious. Yeah, uh, we got a few. You want me to uh, put one through right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. What's their name? All right, uh, let's see. Actually, um, h- how do I do it? Because I, I need, I, uh, I want to make sure that I can. Uh, I can shoot you the uh, oh, link if you want to right now. Yeah, send me on Discord if you would, please. Okay. You want to do one more story while you get that set up in the background? That sounds good. Eli, why don't you, uh, why don't you set me up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, an 87-year-old woman gets tased while cutting flowers. Mm. Dan. Uh, all right. Thank you, Eula. Very good. <laughs> That's what we got coming. This shit doesn't work. You know what? Let's so, not do this now. Yeah, let's... It just says logged out. This is a whole mess. I mean, how long is it going to take you? What do we got? <laughs> we got two seconds here on the clock, guys. <laughs> Hope you're all doing good and having a great time here at the Street Podcast Experience. We're logging into our call studio so we can get the feedback of the geniuses, frankly, that listen to the show. The great I mean, minds. The great minds out there that listen to this show. Dan, how do you wipe, since we've got you here? <laughs> uh, I, I do it the opposite of you, uh, actually. The normal what, way. What I would say is traditional, yeah. You're, you're a righty, I'm a lefty, let's be frank. It's not that <laughs> well. fair. Now, do you go dry or wet? I guess I go dry. I mean, I, I, I feel kind of ashamed admitting that. And, and yeah, we've kind of shamed. <laughs> have we shamed normal dry uh, wipers? Well, <laughs> you guys have your wet wipes, sir. So. Now, Dan, do you ever feel <laughs> that you just can't clean it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And do you give up or do you wipe to the point where it's like, because usually with dry wiping, you're at it, you come to a crossroad where you're like, I give up too early or do I injure my anus? So where do you, where do you fall on that crossroad? Yeah, um, no, I, I've, I've been there and it definitely, it's a risky road. I mean, I, can, I, I'm like you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got hair, so, you know, it gets rough. It gets real rough sometimes. So which road do you take? Do you take the, uh, under wiping or the over harming? I, I gotta say, I'd probably do the over harming. Because that, that's, uh, I mean, the other way is not okay. That's not tolerable, yeah, so. It's not really an option. Not for me, either. No. Have you bled from wiping <laughs> Uh Maybe, maybe. I probably don't check enough. I'm a little, like, I don't, you know, I don't turn around and, and check out my business after the fact. I'm not ashamed to admit that I've, I've bled from wiping. I have to. I have to say. <laughs> um, what's going on here? I, I've got to grab the password. We've, dis, uh, we've, we've distracted Dan. <laughs> You've bled from wiping? I have. Ian, have you bled from wiping? Yeah. He said yes. He said yes. Yeah. Now, Dan, you say maybe. Dan probably did. Come, yeah. I think I everyone I think did. maybe it's an insufficient answer. Well, like I said, I, I'm, I, do I don't, I don't do turn you, around and check. Do you not I look every time you wipe? I don't. I don't. Huh. Do you look on the, like, at what point do you look? I mean, occasionally. I you, don't lo- you don't look at the last wipe? How do you know you're clean? 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, I guess I guess in that sense I do look yes, okay. but right. I'm not like taking. Thank you, Dan. It's a glance. Thank it's you. Glance. <laughs> I fully take it out. I inspect it thoroughly. <laughs> I mean, you have like a magnifying glass. I mean, frankly, I even look. I I generally even look at the first wipe. Right? Yeah. Yeah, he lives with me. <laughs> I respect you for that. Uh, thank you. Now, Dan, would you say that... <laughs> we all got our Teddy Fresh uniform. Dan, has your finger ever slipped through the toilet paper? Because the wet, I mean, the dry... That never happened to me. I didn't know. Dan? <laughs> yeah, and then, and it's, oh. if so, it's followed by like 30 minutes of scrubbing my hands afterwards. How does that fun. happen? All right, we're in. Thank you, Dan. We're in. We're in the system. Thank you for the anecdotes. Thank you for fixing <laughs> my computer. And thank you to, uh, <laughs> thank you specifically to Charms for the flushable wipes. <laughs> oh, I got to hear this. Um,. <laughs> Kyle, I don't know. If you're on the hear. air. Tell me about uh, tell me about your life, or not? I don't want to know everything, Kyle, <laughs> but specifically about the Lyme disease. What? Oh, oh man, you you, you opened right from the. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, from let's the let, let's cut to the chase uh, here. On, on the of Tarantino. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'm a uh, geocacher. If you don't know what geocaching is, it's a uh, little like gps based treasure hunt scavenger hunt type game mm. and a lot of geocaching takes place out in the woods you know on trails and whatnot so before i started doing this i was never uh never a hiker never spent much time outdoors um so i quickly learned that you know you're on a trail for a while sometime nature calls and uh <laughs> let me literally and uh you know, if you're like a couple miles from your car or something, a couple miles from a restroom, you just got to find a spot to take care of business. Hmm. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, the first time this happened, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hairy guy, much like you. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not, it's never good. It never comes out clean. So the first time this happened, I, uh, you know, you always hear this and I, I always thought it was kind of like a joke, but I don't know if you always hear this, but yeah. I, I used the leaves to kind of clean up the business back there, hmm. and uh, <laughs> which is not preferable. So I quickly learned because I mean, as far as my normal wiping routine goes, I'm a dry, wet guy. So I'll go. My first first one will be uh, toilet paper, and then I got the baby wipes right by the toilet. That second, and then I just kind of go back and forth. You kind of it's a good way to kind of feel out the situation without okay. having to uh, inspect it after every wipe because I, I, I you know. <laughs> so let so so oh, yeah. let's go to the the pivotal okay. moment of the story. Yeah. So um, this wasn't so on another occasion because I started packing toilet paper in my like hiking backpack. But um, on this one particular occasion, I I had run out or I forgot it, mm. so I did not have it with me. Right. So uh, you know, I live up in Rhode Island. We ticks ticks are a very prevalent thing up here and Lyme disease as well. So, um, <laughs> so I've never had an issue with ticks in my life, but on this particular occasion when I popped the squat, did my business, didn't have the toilet paper, so I just did the leaf technique to, uh, to uh, you know, Kyle, just kind of take care of things a little bit. Kyle, yeah. did you get a tick on your <laughs> anus? Not on my anus, but a oh. couple, like two days later, um, I... <laughs> I felt something, uh, I think actually, I felt something odd in my groin area, mm. to say that. I don't want to talk about what I was doing. What were you doing, Kyle? With my hand in my groin. <laughs> were you, you, you noticed the tick when you were jerking off? Uh, you said that. He Kyle, me. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, were you able to finish? <laughs> did you finish jerking off what when you when you found the tick? Or, or did you decide to deal with it at the time or later? Oh no! I mean that that ruined the moment. Yeah. So I had I, I, I couldn't see what was going on. I was in bed by now, myself. Where on the groin, night, where you know? on your groin was the tick located? It was like right in there. Like I'm a big dude, so you know, like deep. I got some, I got thick thighs. Sure. You know, yeah. I got yeah. the thick like you. So, so it was. In, that's why I probably missed it because I always do like a check. Uh, after well, I'm where, done it, it, it was, it was like. Um, 
like between the balls and the thigh? It was deep. It was like it was it. It was in there. And it. But like when you say deep, was it was was it under the balls? Was it between the balls and the thigh? Was it next to the penis? It was was right. It was like yeah, in the ball between the ball thigh area. Yeah, right over there. (laughs) That's how. That's how I felt. I felt. I felt when I. So you must have been. That area. hmm, You must have been cupping your balls or something when you were jerking off, right? To feel that there. (laughs) Well, not. You must have been doing a little something special for yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know. You, yeah, no, you, know, you got to treat yourself. You I you totally. Spice things up. Yeah, definitely, most definitely. So, so um, what what happens yeah, when so, you have a tick there? What do you do? Good question. Well, yeah. So I mean, you know, it, 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 as someone, you know, you spend time hiking and whatnot, that, especially around here. You know, you always hear about it. So, I mean, I was freaking out first of all because I never had a tick bite before. So I already knew the the. What you want How to did do you get rid of it? When you want it, when you, yeah. So when you take it out, you don't want to like break the tick's body or leave it. Because right. it was in like underneath. It's like it's burrowed in the skin, like some of it. So did so you the, the technique? Yeah, did, I use like tweezers to right. pull it out. That's like and it. And you that, spin it right. You works. grab it and then you you rotate it right. Right, right. Yeah, and it was tough. You know, it was tricky and hard to see. But, probably. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, I started. Do you do you trim your pubic hair or are you fully uh, bushed? It, it depends when 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 at the time <laughs> you know when when it's um it was probably some bush happening at that time right so was, like the said, visibility was low. Oh yeah, there's a lot of bushwhacking going on. You know, <laughs> oh, man, when, when, and so um, this <laughs> this son of a bitch gave you Lyme disease. Yeah, I, I started wow. feeling really shitty. Oh my wow. god, and, that's uh, horrible. Had, and now I just, it's like, it's, you know, Lyme is a terrible thing. I mean, I don't have it as bad as some people, but it's kind of just with me now. Like, every, like wow. once yeah. a year, this happened about three years, two years ago, maybe. And, um, yeah, so, like, once every, you know, once or twice a year now, like, I always have, like, really bad migraines, like, body aches. It so, just kind of shuts me down for, like, a day. Mm. It's just like with me, even though I went on antibiotics and whatnot, it's just something that sometimes it gets rid of it completely. Sometimes it just lingers with you. So what is the kind of moral of this story? I'm wondering. Don't hike. Don't hike. Don't go out in nature. Moral, the, moral, the moral of the story is, um, I'm not sure what the moral is. What is the, what is the, uh, the of what are we getting out of this, Kyle? Um... I'm not really sure. I was going down a different path when I was talking to Ian, and then somehow we got on this story, and he liked it. Well, so damn. I'm I gotta like, tell you. Right. Well, I'm sorry you got Lyme disease. Yeah. That's awful, but on the plus side, I mean, the masturbating probably yeah. was was definitely worked in your favor in this time. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I know. Like, if it would have stayed longer, I would have been even worse off. So. Really? So I'm is glad, that a, uh, the longer the ticks in you, the worse the Lyme disease? Yeah, because I oh had a God. bite another time, like, and, um... I noticed, I know for a fact, I noticed it within like, you know, an hour. So mm. it ha- for the most part, people say it has to be in there for like 24 to 72 hours mm. for that to be uh, transmitted. So, well, Kyle, uh, I'm, I'm very glad you decided to. There. It was in there for like two days. So Ooh. very glad you decided Pretty to rough. masturbate that on that when you did. <laughs> And I thank you, you know for me, sharing I, for sharing that story with me. But I am yeah. I'm also curious. What is it you said? What the hell are you doing out in the forest? You're looking for treasure. <laughs> yeah, there's so it's this uh, game, I guess, hobby you might call it, it's called geocaching. Huh. So uh, basically, what it is is someone like me or whoever else geocaches hides a container somewhere out in the woods or out. So there's some in the. I mean, there are over three million of these geocaches around the world. Basically, people go look for them. They use like GPS coordinates to find where they are. Once you're ah. like in the location, then it's, you have to try so to find it. It's like a game. Uh, yeah. Is it? Is there something yeah, valuable like, in this yeah, box? Yeah. What do you find? What's going on in this box? Is it other than just well, ticks with Lyme well, disease? I mean, you know, there, there will be <laughs> there will be like little trinkets inside. The rule is, if you take okay. something out of it, you're supposed to put something back in. Mm. Um, do you still geocache? Way, always, uh, uh, what, sorry, what was that? Do you still geocache? Oh, was it ruined for you? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. God mm-hmm. bless. Uh, it, 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 ha- it definitely has ruined being outdoors. I'm way more paranoid now whenever I am out in the woods. I <laughs> used to, like, do tick ch- checks only whenever I got back to the car. After, you know, I was done. Now it's, like, every 20 to 30 minutes imagine. on the trail. I'm like, well, oh, you know what? Let, let me check. Yeah. And, well, thank you, Kyle, for sharing your story. I yeah. hope this is a cautionary tale to everyone out there. 
don't go outside. I mean, that's the moral that I pulled from this. Don't go outside ever. If you do go outside, you do go outside don't expose your asshole to the, to right. the, to the condition. Don't, yeah, right, exactly. Keep your asshole <laughs> clean and covered, my dudes. Kyle, thank you for sharing that wonderful story with us, and I wish yeah. you all the best, and I hope that Lyme disease, Absolutely. you know, keep does, cashing. Does it, yeah, keep cashing, my dog. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Right. Always, always end with a wet one, my dude. Thank you. Well, wow, that was an interesting. <laughs> that was a ride, man. We've got Travis here who uses female razors for asshole shaving only. That's not that surprising. It's like the same John razor. John says he uses sandpaper. Ian, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking his head no on okay. that one. So <laughs> he said, he said, "Where's the box guy? Is that guy still on?" No, I just mm-hmm. see Travis who oh, uses female razors up? and John who I uses sandpaper. Oh, bummer. Well, we can't. That was a great one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm happy with Kyle. It'd be yeah. hard to top this story. I mean, yeah. it didn't. It didn't really add to our knowledge base, but it was a great. Yeah, anecdote. I don't know if we can join the great minds. He's not a great minds collect. I mean, he's a poor minds collective. He got <laughs> thick on his dick, <laughs> but he's a great guy and he's a yeah. funny guy and you know, an interesting guy. I can't believe you guys never did the geocaching thing. That was like you really know big. about it. Yeah, I, I I went on a few of those. Then we don't things. leave the house if you haven't. Known <laughs> geocaching. <Boy. laughs> it was big like a while ago. Have you though. have I'm you had, have you done have you ever done this thing walking outside? <laughs> Forget about geocaching. That's way too high level for us. <laughs> um. Wow. Thank you, Kyle. That was a great story. Damn. You don't. I've got. I've had a tick before. Obviously. Oh, you did? Maybe I have Lyme disease. Maybe huh. that's why I'm so lazy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great to have an excuse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's dramatic, man. It's awful. Mm. Oh, God. It's a fucking little creature burrowing. I can't hear road. that. Oh, sh- but Lyme disease is more prevalent on the East Coast. So huh. you're, you're good. Why did... Uh, anyway, Kyle, love you. Let's move on. Um, 87 year old woman tased. Take the old bitch out. Is what I say. <laughs> she had it coming. <laughs> I love these stories about police. Now, let me, let me, let me say this. Okay. I respect police officers. I respect the job. I respect what they do. But. I have a lot of buts. <laughs> First of all, you signed up for a dangerous job. And you're well compensated. You can go work in a fucking cafe if you don't want to be in harm's way. Okay? Nobody asked you or forced you to sign up to be a cop. The same goes for the military. And I'm sorry, but my opinions are the right opinions. And if you disagree with me, you're just clearly wrong. Why do I, I? First of all, I respect. Well, people. let's tell the story so people can join your. Eighty-seven-year-old woman feeling. tased while cutting dandelion. <laughs> There's no justification. So I'm going to tell the story though, but I'm, I'm on. A, I'm, I want to. I want to okay. piss people off. I'm about to rant about the military. Okay. Let me just say, finish this one point as you try to save me. <laughs> Being in the military doesn't make you a hero by default. But thank you, you for signed, your service. Uh, thank you for your service. You <laughs> signed up. If you didn't, it's, like it's a risky curb. job. It's there. It's the first part. You go, you travel around with a gun and hostile territory. Same with a cop. You walk around with a gun on your hip for a reason. It's dangerous. And you signed up for it. It doesn't make you automatically a hero. And it doesn't mean that you have the right to never be in harm's way. Because the police training in the United States is basically, if you are in any risk, shoot to kill. <clears throat> deadly force when you're confronted with the 87 year old woman with a steak knife in her hand that was used to cut dandelions which is adorable as fucking gets <laughs> to make a salad for her husband oh my god so she's out there cutting dandelions and the police first of all that she wanders across the street she's probably a little uh, she doesn't speak english and she was on some guy's property she probably didn't know <coughs> no, it that. was a it was the ymca or some shit or the boys and girls club okay but they call she was probably a little dementia or a little senile right so she, the guy calls i have a recording but he says she's over here with a knife and she seems lost that's why he called they're like, is she trying to stab people? He said, no, she's not dangerous. She's not mm-hmm. trying to harm anyone. She seems lost. That's why he calls. So the police show up with arms, 
their guns drawn. <laughs> Screaming, you know, drop the knife! Can you imagine that? A sweet old lady with a little, like, steak knife cutting dandelions. <laughs> drop the knife! Drop the knife! <laughs> Shredder's like, what's Shredder. going on? Stop. I'm gonna tase you, Shredder. It's looking intimidating. Like, you cannot, you have to draw the line somewhere. You're signed up for a dangerous job, okay? You have to draw the line somewhere. If some 87, the, the choice between tasing an 87-year-old woman and possibly receiving a knife strike from an 87-year-old woman, you have to weigh uh, the severity mm-hmm. of these two situations. Can you imagine this old 87-year-old decrepit lady? Ah! She's all fast and shit. <laughs> all of a sudden, she's like, oh, I'm an 87-year-old woman. Ah! <laughs> like she's all strong and fast and out to kill. No. The training is fucked. It's fucked. You are not entitled mm-hmm. to a perfect, harmless existence because you're a cop. You signed up for that job. And I appreciate that you're serving the community and you're doing this wonderful, dangerous job that somebody has to do. But you could have gone, you know, you could have, you could have done anything. I just feel like any normal person in that situation would, like, the the thing was that she was walking towards them when they said drop the knife, and she didn't drop the knife. Drop the fucking knife! But it's like, if you were in that situation, what would you do? You just, you'll let her walk to you, and you'll deal with (laughs) it. You don't draw a gun. You put your gun out and say, hi, can I help you? Are you okay? It's like an old lady. Put the knife down. How about you just go and grab her hand and take the knife out of her hand because she's an 87-year-old woman. How about you just do this? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Drop the fucking knife! Take one step forward and we'll, we'll shoot you, bitch! It's crazy. There's a problem here, guys. There's a problem with our police killing people. She didn't die, but... She doesn't... Let's watch the story. Spoiler alert. Either you ruined the story. Now to major questions after an officer in Georgia tased an 87-year-old woman who was cutting Taser. dandelions with a knife. Steve Osinsami is in Atlanta. I'm going to tase you. Is... Take one step forward. I'm going to tase your ass. Imagine that. Imagine that. Mm. Just look at her. That's so sad. Mm-mm. She probably hit the floor like a bag of dirt. She probably hit the floor like a bag of dandelions. She probably got injured. Are you kidding falling. me? She got tasered. Like She's lucky this, to be alive. To fall at this age, you, yeah. you don't heal very fast if you break. I'm surprised she's alive, I mean, frankly speaking. I mean, God, look at that threat, that menace to society. Damn, she had it coming. Woman is actually facing charges this morning. Oh, that's the best part. I, I didn't even tell you the best part. Well, I'll let them speak for it. She's getting charged. <laughs> It is. This is a misunderstanding on so many different levels. She's not only facing charges, but she has a court appearance next month. This 87-year-old grandmother who doesn't speak English and needs help getting upstairs is charged this morning with criminal (coughs) trespass and and obstruction of an officer. She's outside. There's no kids around her. She told me she doesn't speak English and keeps walking up our trail with a knife. A worker at a Boys and Girls Club in Chatsworth, Georgia, called police Monday after seeing her walking with a knife in a field on their property. It turns out she lives across the street and is from Syria. <laughs> it was a steak knife, and she was Special there picking dandelions, which her family ex- oh, Syria. Really it was a steak it's a I mean, it's just a regular knife, knife, like a kitchen yeah. knife. knife. And she was there picking dandelions, which her family explains was meant for a salad for her husband. Police say she even had a bag full of cut weeds. Even the worker who called 911. Is that weed? The old bitch has got weed. Take her out. Sprinkle a little crack on her. She was mysteriously found with crack on her. (laughs) This 87-year-old crack addict pulled a weapon with a bag of weed. Said she wasn't threatening. But she came out at someone with a knife, though, right? Or did she just have it? Okay. The knife onto the property in her hand. Okay. She didn't try and attack anybody or anything. Police arrived with guns drawn, telling her to put down the knife, but say she wouldn't. They say they even threw a knife to the ground, trying to explain. Put down the knife! She won't put the knife down! They explained she wouldn't put the knife down. 
Mm. Got him. Saying what they wanted her to do. When she kept walking towards them, they shot her with a stun gun. The police chief was there during the incident. I deployed the taser rather than using deadly force. He says his officer acted appropriately. Her family says at her age, the shock could have killed her. Uh, yeah. She's recovering. Um, you know, still a little. Could kill up. anyone. Nobody should be tasered. But especially. Well, yeah, sure. Age. I mean, if it's like a thirty-year-old man, a young eighteen-year-old man, woman. Sure, protect yourself. But I love that the police chief comes out and is like, "Oh yeah, no." They they, they acted. reacted perfectly. Yeah. Uh, we 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 endorse fully tasing <laughs> grandmas, children. Really, if you're stepping towards us, we're gonna tase. Or you. if you're walking away from us, we'll still tase you. Yeah, we'll tase you in the back. Mm. A little sore. Um, from what she's, you know, uh, gone through. Facing charges. And there's one thing we should add about that young man who is speaking out for the family, Robin. He is the nephew of this woman, and he's a former police officer. Mm -hmm. And he says while he understands why the officers used their taser, he wishes they had used a little more common sense. Uh, thanks Robin. for bringing that up, Steve, very wow. much. Yes, uh, the nephew said procedurally, the officers did the right thing, but it's kind of like being aware of yeah, the circumstances. Exactly, that's the problem. Procedurally, it's all good. But it's like, it's an 87-year-old woman. Love it. And maybe it was a little something. And sometimes everything is not exactly by the book. Mm -hmm. Well, the best part is she's being, she has to appear in court for like... Um, Cruising around with a knife. Now they're going to charge her to make it look all co kosher. Yeah. It's like let's just let's not waste the justice system's time either. She's being charged with criminal trespassing and obstruction of an officer. You tased her, bro. So, how was that? Was that rageful? You could say that. Polls reveal in the UK that people want <laughs> Edra Elba to replace Daniel Craig as 007 James Bond. But here's the catch, Ela. Yeah? He's black. Uh-oh. He's a black man. Apparently that's caused a lot of drama. People say James Bond has to be white. Here's my take. You want my opinion, Ela? Mm -hmm. You want to know? You guys want to know how to feel about this? I love it. I love, I love Edris Ilba. I, th I mean, people voted for it. Well, what else do you need? That's the best part. This was a public vote in the <laughs> UK with a list of five names. And people voted for Idris. And I love that now everyone's like, oh, you can't be born because you're black. When I heard that, I was like, oh, well, I love that. Not, not even, this is why I love this story so much. It's almost like heartwarming how much people haven't thought about race in this. Because when I heard that, I was like, this, I just love him as an actor. He's suave. He's cool. Mm -hmm. He's a badass. Ever since I saw him in The Wire, I've been yeah. in love with him as an actor. I think he's great. And I think yeah. he'd be an awesome double, like 007. I thought it was great. Um, <clears throat> but apparently a lot of people are unhappy with the with the scoop in fact there's a video that some girl made um what was it you said dan about it about her or well, just the situation well in general it's like well here this guy james bond let's watch this video first i guess but let's see it somebody made a really great point here they're like james bond english american scottish australian welsh irish it's like okay. oh the other actors that played him yeah it's yeah, like it's right. like He's an idea. He's cool. He's suave. He's a spy. He's a badass. Of all the things I think about when I think of 007, white is not like number one. Oh, he's a white guy. <laughs> 007, white, cool, <laughs> suave. Like down at like number 15 or something. I don't, it's not on the list. <laughs> not You're weird. not on the list, right. You're like, think you of uh, top, if you ask someone to write top 10 attributes of James Bond, if you write white, you're kind of weird. <laughs> white. This woman makes some great points. 
Also, I love her intros. Dan pointed out to me, the world is in crisis. <laughs> ah, look at this. Everything is going to hell. All right. The stage is set. Hopkins world. No, Idris Elba. Mm. <laughs> the shot is really powerful. Why is it? Okay, here we go. James Bond. You will not be 007. No why do you say it like, you will not be? Like, is that a threat? <laughs> How do you, why are you so sure about that? Over my dead body. So how many tweets you put out saying I'm Elba, Idris Elba. It's not because you're a gentleman of color. It's because. A gentleman of color. <laughs> you don't like black people, do you, lady? A gentleman of color. James Bond isn't. He's written as an upper class, arrogant white toff, born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Why no. can't that person be black? Do you hear what you're saying? Yeah. He's written as an upper class, snobbish, silver spoon in the mouth. Okay. Is that just white people? Okay. Nurtured by Eton and Sandhurst and <coughs> well connected by his Swiss family fortune. And it's not about talent, Idris. Many people love you. I love how she's like ranting at him. It was yeah, a poll. He didn't even ask to be included in this poll. And he just made a tweet joking about it. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, like, she, he, he's getting shit for this poll where people made a popular vote that they would like to see him in it. You almost more than you do yourself but please can someone on your team come up with their <laughs> own ideas or their own material must we perpetually crowbar in gender and color where it doesn't fit our imagination Why is a precious so thing it wasn't his idea first of all and sec yeah it's like it's like she's the one crowbarring in yeah race, into uh, it, uh, yeah. race isn't a part of james bond He's just a guy. He's a spy. He's a cool ass spy. The fact that he's black is incidental. And he's British, by the way. He's got a cool, slick ass British accent. Mm -hmm. When I think James Bond, British is what I think. Right. Mm -hmm. Not black or white or whatever. He's a British spy. He's got a dope accent that sounds cool. He fucks like crazy. He's a badass spy. And you look down the, you know, <laughs> that uh, white. The snipey. Yeah, the snipey. <laughs> Can we stop making everything about race? It's like... No one was. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Man. The way we love these characters matters, as evidenced by the outrage when someone attempts to mess with the things we love. So you see, Idris, it's not about your color or you. It's about Bond. James Bond. <laughs> How dare she say that? I love how she's directing it towards him. He's like, what the fuck did I do? Anyway. It's just an actor. I had some other thoughts, but it's already been a long... Uh, something about it, you know. I disagree. I think he'd be great, and I hope he gets it. And I'd like to see what she's going to do about it. You will not be James <laughs> yeah. Bond. I'd like to see what you're going to do about it, lady. She's going to find the footage and yeah. destroy it. Sounds like a threat. <laughs> Does matters. I love this. I love the term gentleman of color. <laughs> why do you why do you have to put it like that? Yeah. <laughs> Just say black dude. It sounds less weird. He's a gentleman of color. Have you met my friend Tony? He's a gentleman of color. <laughs> You're like, "What?" <laughs> That's weird, dude. Don't say that. Oh, the black guy? Excuse me, they prefer gentlemen of color now? Evidenced by the outrage when someone attempts to mess with the things we love. So you see, Idris, it's not about... Please don't attempt the thing and to mess with the things I love, which is being white. Okay. How'd I do? Did I get through that? You need a rating after every story. I don't know why... Uh, yeah, guys, <laughs> listen. That's just my opinion. I don't think James Bond needs to be white. Oh, she was saying, wait, where did, I saw this one uh, video of someone saying that it was like as if a white person played a black role. What was that? I didn't see that clip. Where, where, where did I see that, Dan? Mm. I remember that too. It, it, it cracked me up. I was just thinking the last, uh, 
little chunk of that? Did you finish out that? There video? was this great clip that just had me rolling where she was like, what did I miss? She says like, um, no, that's it's like it's having a, a what? That's like having a white person play Kunta Kinte from Roots. Right, right. And I was like, that's about race. Where is Explicitly that? about race. That's about race. It's not the same, you dumb dumb. Let me try to find it. I don't want to watch this video 20 times, though. Yeah. I think we just watched the short version. Oh, wait. Oh, duh. We watched the short one on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. All right, let's finish this fuck. Damn, we watched the wrong one. Damn. How could this happen? <laughs> Why did this happen? Oh man, all right, let's just pick up from here. The Cold War era, and that's the glory of the thing. A throwback. Let me watch to this color. again. It's because James Bond isn't. He's written as an upper class, arrogant white top, born with a silver spoon in his this mouth, again? nurtured uh, by yeah, Eaton and Sandhurst, and well connected to play Winnie Mandela. Here, here. How would that gender and colour where it doesn't fit? And how come it doesn't work the other way? If I was to play Winnie Mandela, how would that go down? She's a cat. I don't know. <laughs> why would you even? Why would you want to play? I mean, I don't know what she's talking about. It looks like she's like, what if I played a black slave? How would that go down? <laughs> Pretty bad. Because it's about race. James Bond has nothing to do about race and, po and identity. And yeah, she's talking about uh, the wife of Nelson Mandela. So it's like explicitly about apartheid. <laughs> like, you know. It's a fictional character. That's a real person that's black. Right. About apartheid. And what if I played Hitler in a film? <laughs> I think I would upset a lot of white supremacists. And that's just not right, frankly. I'm seen as a cow. What's the issue? And if they cast a All white right, I can't shaft, watch her anymore. How would a that white go? shaft. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Shaft was a film. I don't need to play this anymore. Yeah, I think we get it. All right, Played the wrong one. <laughs> I would like to see. Uh, would you watch White Shaft, Dila? I actually don't know the. I don't know if I've seen. Shaft. What is Shaft? It? Sick. Let's move on. I'm over it. Grand Jury. Oh God, not this one. We can skip because there's a lot of stuff. Grand jury report. No, Ela, our duty is to report the news. <laughs> we are here to report current events and news and culture and to tell you guys how to think and feel. Grand jury report. Catholic priests ran a child porn ring in six Pittsburgh, uh, basically throughout Pennsylvania. This, uh, this is shocking to me. Um... I guess let's start with this video. This this is horrifying. Wait, is this it here? Yeah. Now this is this is just plain evil. I mean, I don't really know what how else yeah. to describe this. In Pennsylvania, there is an epidemic, a, an actual pedophile ring. Okay. Of priests. Three hundred priests. I don't know how many priests are in Pennsylvania, but I can't imagine more than like a thousand. I mean, I don't know what's the number, but what is that? What is that? 30%? That's a whole state. And it just, it kind of pisses me off because you're seeing a lot of people, all these conspiracy theories about, like, satanic pedophile rings. Like this QAnon and Pizzagate and all this shit Alex Jones goes off. He says, like, the world is run by mm -hmm. satanic pedophiles. Bro, look at your own fucking church. Mm -hmm. This is the most evil shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. How can you talk about Pizzagate when the Catholic Church is literally a satanic cult? When you have 300 priests systematically abusing kids in Pennsylvania, everybody in that organization knows it's happening. Everybody. Everybody. The priests, 
the well, bishops. That's part of the stories that they were covering up. <laughs> But for... how are they? And and I'm, am I supposed to believe that they're not all participating? How can you let that evilness slide yeah. in the church? Like their whole thing is community and serving God, and like, and so, how am I supposed to believe that over the course of many decades, you can have that many? pedophile priests you're covering up and you're moving them around and you're not all in on it not just covering who, it up who is all in on it everybody what do you mean everybody if 30% of the people that work for you are fucking kids like what 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 reason do you have to keep that system moving if you find a pedophile you kick him out and you apologize When you have 300 and you're covering them up, you're perpetuating a system that you probably want to keep going. I think yeah. there's a lot more of these guys fucking kids than just the 300. Yeah. And it's just so funny and ironic to me that people will go slander and, and da say dangerous shit like Pizzagate and... Um, Basically make up stuff. QAnon and all this shit say Obama's a pedophile. When, when you have this right Bro. here. Like, and, and the shit that you're going to hear is going to make your sprinkle. I mean, this is really evil stuff. So just prepare for I mean, this is shocking. Do I sound like a conspiracy theorist? Like, I'm basing it on something. Well, I'm not sure what are you... Everybody's you in on it, bro. Everybody? The fucking everybody. The whole church. Not the not the people, not the congregation, but like all the priests, the bishops. Well, yeah, I don't know how high the, the pope. I, mean, I don't know the pope. People were saying, "What was the last pope that resigned?" That never happened. People speculate that he was fucking kids and he didn't want it to come out. Mm -hmm. Imagine the pope is raping children, and you're talking about Pizzagate. What do you really? That, that it makes me think. Do you really care about kids, or is it just a political attack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, this shit is so upsetting. A dropping number is about child sex abuse by priests. It found credible allegations <coughs> exist against more than 300 priests and that more than 1,000 uh, child victims were identifiable. Uh, what is worse because of lost records uh, or fear of coming forward, it is likely the true number of victims is deep into the thousands. Sure. So Jean Casares has been working this for us. And Jean, Tens of thousands, most tell likely. Me more. Massive investigation, yeah. and it was with countless numbers of law enforcement, prosecutors, other attorneys within the office of the attorney general, and of course the grand jurors. Officials are saying that this report is the largest, most comprehensive document into child sexual abuse within the Catholic Church that has ever been produced in the United States. This report took two years. It was written by 23 Pennsylvania grand jurors who listened to dozens <coughs> of witness testimonies and witnesses. This is just in the documents state of about Pennsylvania. alleged child yeah, sex well. abuse in six dioceses, which involved 54 of Pennsylvania's 67 counties. The report states that the testimony was heard from dozens of witnesses and half a million pages of internal documents were subpoenaed. It also states that there were credible allegations found against over 300 priests. Over 1,000 child victims were identifiable, but it's believed that the true numbers are way in the more. thousands. Way more priests, way more kids. The report states that most of the victims mm -hmm. were boys, but girls were also victims. Some were teens, some were younger, some were manipulated with alcohol or pornography. They were raped in various forms and fashions. And grand jurors found that church leaders in every part of the state preferred to protect the abusers and their institution above <laughs> everything else. They Listen to that. Mm -hmm. Every part of the state, every part of the institution, every single time, that's a church policy to protect the institution at the cost of the abusers, perpetuating... A system. It's basically what exactly does the Catholic Church do except rape kids? <laughs> I mean, what exactly would you say you do, Catholic Church? Are you enjoying that tax exemption? I'm. I mean, I'm disgusted. I'm repulsed. Like, I think it's time to close it down. I think it's time to lock shop up on that church. 
Imagine any other fucking... I mean, I'm really upset. Imagine Scientology, I mean, which I fucking Imagine. despise. Imagine any organized religion being like, oh, yeah, sorry, we raped all your kids. You Oops. don't need to imagine with Scientology. Yeah, I'm, but I'm saying, imagine this re a scope of, like, all the kids are being raped in Scientology. Yeah, watch the a and &E series. All right, bad example. You don't need to imagine. Yeah, okay, bad example. They're all fucked up. But what exactly do they do there? Why are we giving them a tax exemption? I mean, this is evil, you guys. This is just actual evil. It's like... Like, all the weird conspiracies you hear about Pizzagate and, like, weird child sex torture and pa basements is happening in the Catholic Church. Yeah. Wait to you hear they this. They say because the cover-up was most important <coughs> of all. These petitioners... Is Alex Jones ranting about this? I don't know. Maybe he is. I hope he is. That'd be pretty weird if he wasn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can bring up Pizzagate or QAnon and not this all day. I don't know how you can't talk about this all day if you care about pedophilia. And for a time, some of the diocese sought to prevent the entire report from ever seeing the light of day. In effect, they wanted to cover up the cover up. They sought to do the same thing that senior church leaders in the diocese we investigated have done for decades. Bury the sexual abuse by priests upon children and cover it up forever. The report states that because of the cover <coughs> okay. oh, let me up, this. almost all of the abuse is too old to be prosecuted. Like that? The, the worst grand jury part has it. issued presentments against two priests who So out of the 300, 200 plus, they're only, they covered it up for so long that these guys have passed the statute of limitation and can no longer be charged except for two i mean that's a criminal organization that knows what it's doing folks right round of applause to these guys let's give them tax exemption let's make sure they never have to pay taxes um it gets crazier here let me read some facts here i've got about this <sighs> this is a, a quote from one of the victims George claims that z that the priest began taking photos of him on a camera. All the priests giggled. So there's many priests involved in this one location. Then added photos of him to a collection of other teen boys. According to the grand jury, these men and another priest were part of a ring of predatory priests that raped children, shared intelligence on potential victims, and manufactured child pornography in parishes and rectories. This group of priests used whips violence, and sadism in raping their victims reads one line in nearly 900 pages of documents. Hello? Is the whole world talking about this? <laughs> I mean, I know people are talking about it, but Dan just looked. He said nothing on InfoWars about it. I mean, the story's a couple of days old, but, like, hello? This is kind of insane, you guys. Yeah. And this isn't just the United States. There's crazy in Argentina, in Ireland, this, I mean, there's huge stories about child abuse. Mm -hmm. It's like pedophiles are literally just joining the organization. Are we shocked? Sadism. Whips, violence, and sadism. And raping. Systematic raping. What? I wonder if religious people, after hearing this, would still send their kids to whatever <clears throat> it is they're sending them to. I don't know. It's a good question. It's the Catholic Church. I mean... It's the Catholic Church. The Pope. Where does the buck stop? Where's the buck stop? Who's taking responsibility for this? Are we as a society taking responsibility for this? That our kids and our citizens and our fellow, our fellow citizens, our children, are being raped. And the guys who did it are being covered up for so long that they can't even be charged. These guys are chilling, dude. Mm -hmm. 
They're at our local parks, and I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm being serious. Ser- what was the, what was I saying earlier? Serious as what? As a school shooting. <laughs> I forgot what it was. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> this world is so fucked, you guys. Why are we not Pizzagate? We have so if you uh, imagine being this fucked. There, oh, there was an email about a, pi- a <laughs> handkerchief with a pizza, and upside down, it looks like a pedophile. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Let me read this again. The group of priests use whips, violence, and sadism in rape, raping their victims. But at the, the handkerchief upside down, why aren't you talking about this, genius? You don't need any more fucking evidence. My skin is crawling. And there's more in, in like, <coughs> the details of what they've done. It's, it's horrible. It's even just horrible to read. The report said the mint... Here, this is, this is so fucked, dude. If you can top sadism... I mean, this is part of the sadism. The report said that the priests gave a specific gift to children they favored. Something they could wear that would mark them as prime targets for abuse. He said, they told me that they, the priests, would give their boys, their altar boys, or their favorite boys, these crosses, he t- George told the grand jury. So he gave me a big gold cross to wear that marked him so all the other priests knew he was fair game for abuse. Can I get another look at that handkerchief? There's no need for conspiracies, guys. This is as fucked as anything your imagination can comprehend. Almost every instance of abuse we found is too old to be prosecuted. Mm. Here's some more highlights. In Greenboro, a priest impregnated a 17-year-old girl, forged a pastor's signature on a marriage certificate, and divorced the girl months later. Another priest in Greensboro groomed middle school students for sex, according to the grand jury, by telling them that Mary had to bite off the cord and lick Jesus clean after the nativity. (laughs) What does QAnon have to say about the... (laughs) What the fuck? Well, never mind this. I can't wait to see what what, what Obama and George Bush and Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton... Let's hear more about their sex ring. In Harrisburg, a priest abused five sisters from the same family and collected samples of their urine, pubic hair, and menstrual blood. This is like, you've seen that show, True Detectives? How it's like so sick and twisted beyond imagination? This is real. Not, yeah. You know the, this, the phrase, stranger than fiction. Mm-hmm. Can't make this shit up. Yeah. In Harrisburg, a priest raped a seven-year-old girl who was in a hospital after her tonsils were, were removed. In Pittsburgh, this, this is just the highlights that they got. Yeah. And this is just one state, one area. In Pittsburgh, church, church officials said that a 15-year-old boy pursued and literally seduced a priest. Church officials, that was their statement in defense of the priest. That a 15-year-old boy pursued and literally seduced a priest. Well, I guess that clears that up. A church report later acknowledged that the priest had admitted to sadomasochistic activities with several boys. Are you sick yet? Yes. (laughs) I feel like people forget about this. Everyone's just like, oh man. There goes the Catholic Church again. I'm ready to lock it up. I don't think these guys, their library card is being revoked. (laughs) What's going on? This is the most evil shit I've read. In Allentown, a priest admitted sexually molesting a boy and pleaded for help, according to documents, but was left in ministry for several more years. Priest rapes a child 
He begs for help, and they leave him there for several more years. Hmm. It's just, it's so horrible. I, I, it's like, how do you even, what do you even say? What? I want to see action. Because we've been talking about this shit for like decades. Mm-hmm. And it's just getting worse and worse. Here. This is a wonderful one. In Allenstown, a priest who had abused several boys, according to the grand jury, was given a recommendation to work at Disney World by the church. They conveniently left out the part where he was a convicted yeah. uh, child rapist. Uh, would this priest be good? Uh, can we get a reference for his job at Disneyland? He's going to be in a Mickey Mouse outfit, taking <laughs> photos with kids. Great guy. Loves kids. Really, really loves kids. Great with kids. <laughs> Highly <laughs> recommend. Well, and he wasn't convicted, right? None of these guys. Well, the convicted. church knew. Right. Uh, they, no, no, no. It was not, known to them. Yeah, that's too old. Right. And Scranton. Isn't that where the office is? Sure is. The Electric Man. City. Mm-hmm. A priest, oh my god. A priest who was later served prison time for abusing children was found to have been HIV positive for years. <laughs> like he would fucking care. According to CBS, a Pennsylvania grand jury report investigating the matter states the church officials gave a former priest a positive reference to work at Disneyland, even though officials fielded at least one allegation about a sexual abusing a boy. The report says he worked at the theme park for 18 years, driving the train to the Magic Kingdom. Well, isn't that a nice uh, little analogy? It's pretty creepy. All aboard the ride to the Magic Kingdom. His favorite ride? Peter Pan. Oof. Where boys never grow up. <laughs> Yikes. You know, this reminds me when I was a kid in <coughs> my neighborhood, there was like a a religious neighbor mm -hmm. that, um, I guess they had like a, a, I don't know what you call it, where you go to like classes when they teach you the, they talk about the Torah and they teach you. Mm -hmm. So like on Saturdays, they would tell all the kids in the neighborhood to come and that they give uh, popsicles. Mm -hmm. So I remember wanting to go and my dad was like, he knew Don't something go. was up. You're not going to this stuff. Because, like, now that I think about it, it's pretty weird. Why are you inviting kids and giving them popsicles? Why do you want all the kids over there? Yeah. With, like, this irresistible invitation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so easy to be deviously hide behind religion. That was really slick of your dad, by the way. Yeah. I wonder if people knew or if he just had the, an insight. Or if he had My an insight. My dad was always very paranoid about this stuff. And for a good reason. Mm -hmm. I, mean. I mean, it's it's so ironic, obviously, that like under the guise of God and this whole institution of Christ yeah. is the most evil, evil, evil shit. We all agree in this society. Everybody agrees. Like child rapists are like the worst, right? Like we all agree. Somehow. I mean, at this point, if you give your church, if you give your kid over to the church, I mean, you're pretty much taking a crapshoot. Pretty much. I mean, or, There's I like mean, a really good chance they're going to get molested. Fuck. That shit really, I don't know, man. It just pisses me off because there's all of these stupid fucking conspiracies that are ruining with like so little evidence that it's there's no evidence. It's a total conspiracy that are fucking with people that have nothing to do with this shit and they're ignoring. It's making a joke of the serious actual. Well, they're just using it as political attack and it can't be more obvious than this because they're not talking about the church. But somehow Obama is a pedophile. Hillary Clinton's a pedophile. Okay. It's shocking, man. It's so evil. It's so fucking evil. How can you allow an organization that's covered up that treachery, that evilness, for so long continue to exist? 
They should be ran out. I really wonder, like, what do the normal people think? Like, actual religious people. What? I would like to know. Yeah. Can we get calls of Catholics? Like, you gotta assume that your priest is most likely a pedophile. I'm really curious what people are going to think. I mean, everybody's covering it up. Uh, uh, what's the what's the number? Eight 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 oh eight. Dan uh, hot meme. Eight oh eight hot meme, which seems. If there's any Catholics name. listening, um, okay, I'm going to clear the call queue. If you're on the if you if you've been holding, sorry guys, you're getting hung up on. Deal with it. If there's a Catholic listening that has a strong opinion about this, give me a call. I'm interested in people that disagree with me. I want to hear how you think I'm wrong about the church. But we disagree with what? We're well, they, they, the well, news story. Well, no. no, well, I'm saying, like, close it down. So, is it not as bad as I... Th- I mean, it seems, like, in- unarguably bad. But either way, I want to know what Catholics think about this. So, meanwhile, as we populate some calls, we've got um, the casting thing that I don't really care about, honestly. Yeah. And then we've got the... This I do like. Kevin Spacey. Billionaire Boys Club movie came out. <laughs> And it earned $126 on opening day. <laughs> it was a limited release. It was on like 10 theaters, but still. Oh, okay. But, but still, still, $126, that's like 10 people. It's actually less, probably. That's just friends and family, probably. <laughs> that's, that's not even friends and family. There was like <laughs> thousands of people involved in that movie, probably. Aye, aye. 126 bucks. Shit. You could have made that working at damn... It's fucked up that one person can fuck up a whole project, you know, for everyone involved. Apparently it was a really awful movie, though. Mm. I saw on Rotten Tomatoes it had like 5% or something. So. I mean, the name, Billionaire Boys Club. Get a better name. <laughs> That's got to be embarrassing, though. You should have... I'm not going to say it. I was going to make a joke. It's probably inappropriate. As inappropriate as raping kids as a priest, though? No. I feel like I should get a little more leeway on things. Uh, Will I Am has been a longtime favorite of the podcast. Not the podcast, of the show, of H3H3 Productions. We've, I've enjoyed Will I Am's antics because he's, as far as I, I mean, he's musically talented, I guess, not my style. But he's very socially challenged, and and he thinks he's very suave. I feel like he wants to be Kanye, kind of. He thinks he's Kanye. I think you're right. He is Kanye. But I'm afraid he might be Kanye, but without the yay. He's more of like a a con, just a straight-up con. I don't know. (laughs) But (laughs) No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to call him a con, but he's definitely a goofball. (laughs) Just kidding. So my, my, the joy of this rabbit hole we're going to go down right now is that um, I saw this video and then I found out that there's actually a subreddit dedicated called Cringe I Am. <laughs> I was like, wow, this guy's prolific cringer if he's got his own subreddit. Shit. Well, let's start with this video. You know, tell me if you think this is interesting because it will not be. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. So... Um, I guess he's a judge on The Voice UK, and he's just mm-hmm. like, he just can't decide. Who I pick yeah. does not mean the folks that go home, we don't figure out how we work together. Um, so I, this is for the show, and who I think will be great for the finals. Okay. It has nothing to do with how I feel about you being an artist moving forward. So... And that name is? That name is... They're running is, out of time. Like, really running out of time. Hold on, wait. I'm going to let Jennifer pick. What? Well, well, she's really needing that. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, right oh, my now. God. Oh. Oh, I know it's tough. Oh, Can it's I go on? Full or farewell. Let's have a name. So, like, it's really not cute, but we need a name. Catch a tiger by the toe. Well, It's just, this is just the hardest decision Oh ever. my god, dude. Get on with it. Also, we only have so much time left of the 
show, so I really need a name. <laughs> and then when he says it, nobody hears him. Did they hear? <laughs> Who did you say? I just wanted to stop the music. No, it's gonna be Tanya. Tanya. <laughs> oh, but anyway, whatever. It's kind of a whatever. kind of a goofy, not that bad, but like yeah. it. It really more about the fact that there's a cringe I am subreddit, <laughs> and so then I Name. popped on over to there, and I was like, "Wow, there is some good stuff here." So, kind of want to go down the list of cringe I am top of all time, and now this one is really poignant. I would say it's very educational and might inspire you a little bit as well. Startup of the year, guys. Tip of the week. What makes a great logo? Mm. First off, your logo has to be just as impactful in black and white. God, he so much there. reminds me of that kid who's like, you will, you what, you got, you got, <laughs> my dream is to, you. <laughs> if your logo is not powerful I mean, black he, and white, then there's a problem. He has autism, if logo right? Like his eye contact. No. Powerful, the way his, no? Very, very small. Like his eyes are, he can't make eye contact and he's darting all around. Or he's on drugs or something. Collapses when you blow it up really, really big, then there's a problem. If your logo can't transform itself to other things and you still know what that logo is, then there's a problem. So your logo what? should be able to have all those things in the What are world they doing in the editing here? Why are there two cameras? They have a camera there and it's he's looking through that camera. And they're, not, they're not using <laughs> the camera. They're not, but he's not supposed to, I don't think he's supposed to switch. And companies. He's not supposed to dart between here, the cameras. Now they show brand. it when he's not looking. I know, but you're not supposed to dart between the cameras. The they just wanted like a nice profile yeah, shot and he's doing this. <laughs> he's doing like this. I mean, what, what the hell are you supposed to do with that? He's looking kind of in between them, though. The company's objective, on a symbolic level, right? Because you have to think of what India is going to do mm. to the world. Right. We know what Silicon Valley did to the world. What's India? We know what China do? does for the world. We do. But what India is going to do for the world is they're going to create this symbolic language because India is unique because they speak English. He's talking about the about design. logo. Yeah, he's talking about the logo. They have logo. a different alphabet. Damn, he's on some. He's on. He's on to something. I wonder what he. I wonder how he wipes. Is it red jamming or what was it? Green jamming. Oh yeah, <laughs> the white. <laughs> green. Uh, green jamming. So they're. Gonna, I don't want to pick up a red jam. They're going to add a whole new type of visual connecting language to the planet. You know, <laughs> and symbology and logos are going symbology? to play a big role on that. Mm. Understanding something just by looking at a logo. Or different symbols, hmm. a new language, a new type of font will emerge. He's got the Ty Lopez quality where you can talk and talk, but doesn't say anything. Well, it's like it's really that that ultimate saying. All you need in life to be successful is confidence and ignorance. <laughs> it's like if you have that unshakable confidence, if you don't even think about anything you're saying, you never consider what you're saying. You're going to sound to some people, smart. Anyway, do we have any callers? Let's see. Looks like we got one. What's his name? Ian, what do you think? Is this a call? He's saying he's got one on deck that he thinks will be better. So maybe hold off for a second. Okay. <sighs> Guys, uh, well, we've pretty much reached the end, but I want to take this call. I'm canceling cable. I'm so sick of fucking cable. <laughs> Me and Ela were like, we, you know what? Let's, yeah, get, let's get cable. We got it for the first time ever, like a few months ago. Right. And it's so stupid. Well, we said, you know what? People like cable. Let's try it out. It it's was expensive. almost like nostalgic for me because I used, I remember like at my parents' house, you could just turn on the TV and something will play. Right. Like you don't have to choose all the time. Right. What to watch with Netflix and those kind of services. But, oh my God, it's just commercial. Well, first of all, it costs like $120 a month. Okay. Which is more than double pretty much what it would cost to have every streaming app, including like HBO and Showtime. Mm -hmm. 
So then, there are so many commercials. Like the other day, I sit down for breakfast, and it's at the tail end of the show, and I'm sitting, I'm eating, and I'm just watching commercials, and it's like five minutes long. And by the time I'm done with my breakfast, the show's back on. And then let's say you don't like the show. You waited five minutes to see what it's about. Yeah. Then you want to switch a channel. Yeah. Always, it turns on on commercials. Yeah. Then it's like another five Pretty minutes. Pretty much, if you just go channel up through all the main channels, you're going to hit commercials about 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, you're about to go into a commercial. Yeah. Like, I can watch the same shows on Hulu without commercials. Why am I on cable? Why do I have cable? I don't get it. The only thing is that you can record shows, but I mean... <laughs> if they never invented that, dude. <laughs> but like... And then the other day our recording thing wasn't working. And it's not recording the shows we want. It's and really I'm like, okay, so there it. really is no reason to have this. And then the shit that's on there. Flip-flop, flip and flop <laughs> pawn stars. <laughs> flip or flop. <laughs> it's like the dumbest shit that you didn't even know existed. <laughs> Like, I'm happier knowing that these shows don't exist. There's so many house-flipping shows. <laughs> Do we need more house-flipping shows? You've got a gay couple. You've got a black couple. Yeah. You've got a white couple. You've got one Asian, one redhead couple. You've got a couple that's divorced. <laughs> They're in Las Vegas. They're in California. Right. They're in Houston. They're in Florida. Or the lottery. The lottery. That was one. I, have we talked about this before? I don't know if we talked about it. I don't believe these shows that exist. There's a show <laughs> on home on this. Uh, we must have talked about it. There's one called My Lottery Dream House where they <laughs> get lottery winners and follow them to build their dream house with the lottery winnings. I'm like, how niche do you get? <laughs> There's so many news. 24-hour news all day, every day. So many news. So many people with opinions. So many commercials. So many commercials. What am I missing? Mm. What am I missing? Why do people like cable? Do we have a call yet? I'm just dragging on. I'm trying to waste time. We could end it. It's been two hours. Okay, Gabriella here. here. Is this a good one, right? Gabriella? That's the one. All right, let's bring her in. Gabriella, thanks for uh, giving us a ring. No problem. So tell me about, so, okay, you, you've been listening to our conversation about the Catholic Church? I have, yes. So what's your reaction to, to what I've been saying? Um, a lot of reaction. So it's very interesting. I went to 12 years of Catholic school, mm-hmm. and I'm still a practicing mm-hmm. Catholic. Um, my personal reaction is usually to just disconnect myself a little bit from kind of what's going on in the Catholic Church and just, I still go to Mass, so kind of work to disconnect that piece of it, Mm. disconnect the priest, the people, the institution itself, um, because then it kind of gets a little bit culty and weird. Mm. (laughs) Um, But for me, there's, since I grew up going to church, there's something calming about it, Mm -hmm. but you really have to work to to remove yourself from what's going on because it gets down to like telling the priest will tell you how to vote and what you should believe politically. And, Hmm. you know, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with with the Catholic church, but I still practice and I still believe in the fundamentals of it. So was as far as all of this. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, was there anything I said that upset you? No. Hmm. Um, I think that, I think that the sex scandals have been going on since I've been very young. Um, and part of the way that the Catholic Church works is that there, the priests move around from congregation to congregation hmm. before the sex scandal started, or maybe because they started. Um, but they move around from congregation to congregation to kind of mirror how the apostles moved around and preached. Hmm. So a way of covering it up was oh, this priest is moving to a different congregation, Hmm. when in reality, I'm originally from Long Island, New York, or they would move them to upstate New York, so they Hmm. would all be in one facility, and then that's when the cover-up would happen. Hmm. Um, So my high school is actually, they just closed it down 
um, and one of the bishops from that whole Pennsylvania scandal is actually coming to Long Island now, so it's been in the news quite a bit for us. Mm. Um, so it just, I don't, it, even the cover-up on some of this stuff, I don't know if you folks are into um, some of those Netflix series that go into some of the crimes, but mm. there's one called The Keepers, which oh, is okay, about yeah. um, the cover-up of a nun in Baltimore. Right, where people were and killed and shit. That were, yep, and I have friends that went to that church and knew that priest, and it, their reaction to kind of the whole thing, it's just, it's so, seedy because the whole the whole cover up went through beyond the Catholic Church and into if you have Catholics in the police force that it mm. you know mm-hmm. it kind of it, it's you, just you, gotten so out of control. So, and sh- but you you sound sympathetic to what I'm saying. You don't seem to have much conflict with with my claims. No, so it's it, I. It sounds very I mean, culty, though. The, the way you're describing it is like you've got Catholics <laughs> in the police force. You've got them all over the place. Yeah, They're yeah. all covering up. I mean, it sounds very cult-like. Yeah. It is. I mean, if you talk to, like, mm-hmm. you know, some of my family, that's very Catholic, very by the book. Well, what do your parents think about it? Because they're probably more old school. Like, I want to know what's the dissenting opinion. Yeah. Because I'm sitting here saying, so, shut down the Catholic Church. I want to hear someone be like, that's, yeah. I want to hear somebody say, that's, you're fuck, that's fucked up. For saying that. Yeah, I mean, I would disagree with that, right? Like, I wouldn't want the Catholic Church shut down. I would want to see some of the priests that were molesting children go to jail because they think that it's, it, you're not above the law. <laughs> you know what I mean? But don't. But if you talk to, like, I'm sorry? I mean. Um, if you talk to, like. Go ahead. I, I, go my, ahead. Um, my. I don't know. So if you talk to, like, my stepdad, who's very conservative, it's kind of like, eh, it's all over now. It's all over. This isn't happening anymore. It's all over now. It's kind of oh, like a denial. they're thing. in denial about really? it. They think it was a past problem that people like, are still digging up dirt. Yep. Yep. It's, like, but it's how, all if over. You, how, if you, I'm assuming you don't have kids right now, right? I don't, but I have a nephew that's... Um, was just baptized. Mm. Are you worried about your nephew being around priests? I mean, I feel like you have to be careful with it, right? Like, the Catholic schooling is a lot different now because there are a lot less nuns and priests, period, which means that there's a lot of lay people that are teaching those classes. There's not really a heavy, you know, presence of priests like yes you go to school it's, it's kind of when you're in the service of like doing the altar serving and the things like that that it seems a little bit more intense and sketchy but i did i did date one person that anytime it was brought up would like lie off the handle so you know mm. that something happened and something mm. like not great so mm. the re- the result like the long-term results of it you know even if you had a therapy to deal with it i mean it's still there it's like any sort of abuse sure Abuse yeah. is abuse. It doesn't matter. Well, you, you sound you sound <laughs> sympathetic, and um, yeah. So, well, thanks for sharing your, your you story want, with you us. Want to this, like, yeah. Well, frankly, I down. yeah. I, I, I mean, <laughs> well, the the truth is, if you have an instant, I I'm, I don't want to get in an argument with you specifically because I mean, you didn't call yeah. up to argue with me, so that's fine. But yeah. like, if you have an instant, you say you don't shut down the church. Well, first of all, constitutionally, yeah. you can't shut down a church anyway. But it's like. If no. you have systematic cover-up, I feel yeah. like the institution has proven that it can't, yeah. can't be like, why does it exist? Why does it exist at all? Anyway, we don't have to, I'm not trying to get an argument with you, but thank you for calling. <laughs> God bless you. No Appreciate yeah, you. Thanks. And uh, wish yeah. you all the best. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. I got, pl- I'm not looking for people that agree with me for Christ's sake. Well, I, I think, you know, most rational people would have yeah, a hard time disagreeing. Well, I you know? feel like what I'm saying is fucked up in a way. Because everybody outside all over the world isn't being like, shut down the Catholic Church. So I'm trying to understand why what I'm saying is fucked up. Well, I think the, the one point she made that was interesting and is probably true for most is that because, you know, the, this particular story is about instances that happened 
in the past, yeah. I think a lot of people probably think, oh, we, we clean this up. It's not anymore. like this anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, which may or may not be true. I don't know. But yeah. that, that's probably how they rationalize it. Hmm. It's hard yeah. to know. It's tricky. It's really tricky. Got to be careful out there with your kids. But isn't that fucked that's up to, for someone who's an active member of the church to be like, you got to be careful. Whatever. Yeah. All right. I've said my piece about it. It's a disturbing story. Um, Shreddy's going nuts. Starting to shred cables here. So, guys, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this Tuesday episode. This is the Let Me Tell You What to Think and Feel episode. (laughs) Those are the Tuesday episodes. The Right Opinion episodes. Remember, guys, there's not much time left on these represent shirts. You got it in black. You got it in tie-dye. You got a hoodie. You got the extra thick hat. It's only like four days left. Or not even less, right, Dan? Yeah, I think it ends uh, three this days, Friday at noon. So, yeah, about three days. Mm. And make sure to go to teddyfresh.com slash collection slash sale. That's a you mouthful. You don't all that. Yeah. You'll, you'll figure it out. Having a 50% <laughs> off sale. That's insane. Isn't it? And... We're How'd we do? We're excited to release some new items finally, pretty soon in about two weeks. Oh, yeah. We're going to make a video kind of preview for Ethan and Neela before. Maybe. Not maybe, definitely. I'm excited. Okay. You don't want to? I just say maybe because we haven't posted in so long, I don't even assume. It's like a vlog. It'll just be like a yeah. vlog. How'd we do? How was this episode? It was good. <laughs> it was an emotional roller coaster, like you said. I, feel like an, I feel, always feel like an asshole like expressing strong opinions. What is the? This is the. This is the strong this opinion. Is the therapy show. That's why you watch this portion of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be spending a lot of time on um, better help. <laughs> I need so much time on better help. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> it was good. You see how fucked up I am, you guys? I'm having a dialogue on. <laughs> On camera. We usually do this off camera. I usually shut off the camera and be like, was that okay, you guys? Was that show okay? Curl up into a few I want you guys to see just how insecure <laughs> and how neurotic and anxious of a person I am on camera. Because that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> People say, you know. <laughs> Look. Now he's chewing on the top. <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> You're so fucking cute. Look. You can say I'm an asshole. You can say I'm a Jew. I wouldn't use that as an insult. That's not okay. But it's true. You can say whatever you want about me. Yeah. But I feel like this is as real as it gets. (laughs) This is live, baby. There's no take backs. I might sound like an asshole. I might sound like an idiot. I might sound uneducated. I might sound racist. But this is as real as it gets. There's no take backs. This is live. Okay, so forgive me if sometimes I sound stupid or offensive or you think I'm in. There's no editing it out. It's all off the cuff. This is live. This is who I am. Just like Garth Brooks said. And I'm, that's just who I am. There's no hiding from me when it's live. Me from myself. Yeah. yeah. So not weird. There's no hiding from me. There's no me hiding from myself when it's live. And so I want you guys to see how neurotic and insecure and anxious I am. Because the truth is, you guys probably think I'm a perfect, cool-ass dude that's just <laughs> confident and always all right, just fucking good. Chewing on your shoe now? What is it, Sean? But the truth is, boy, I don't feel like that guy ever. <laughs> I think it's important for you to know that. Right, Elo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. God damn it! I I got it! You gonna hit me with the crickets? <laughs> <laughs> the only soundboard I need is. <laughs> Even though I get out of my. That's. Ooh, shut my ass down. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let us know if you did or didn't. Do you really want to know if they didn't? I mean, if, if everyone's like, I didn't enjoy that, <laughs> then I should probably listen. 
Dan will filter comments to me. That's how insecure and fragile I am. I don't, I can't read comments anymore. I literally can't even see it. That's how fragile I am, you guys. I want you to know. I am a fragile, I am petty, I am insecure, and I am deeply unhappy. Jesus. <laughs> Just let you know I brought in the... Uh the podcast theme song which is very upbeat as you're oh it's playing right now <laughs> so um just remember that guys i'm not a f- i'm fucked probably more than you are it's not a dick com- measuring contest i was gonna say have a nice weekend but have a n- well, it's not a weekend it's not yeah, the weekend. that's what i'm saying but this friday we've got burke kreischer which i'm excited about he's super funny He's a super great guy. Yep. We finally get him in the podcast. He's one of my favorite comedians. Mm-hmm. Hilarious and shirtless. I wonder if he's going to wear a shirt. That's a good question, actually. <laughs> I prefer a shirt, speaking frankly, but I leave the choice to him. I think he wears a shirt. I probably can wear a shirt. On his day-to-day. Day-to-day, he's shirted. <laughs> so tune in on Friday at our usual time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And you've been filled in with the right opinion. <laughs> Thanks for watching.